for me though, so I can't use that as a <laughs> I have no as idea. a gauge. Bloody Moon <laughs> hears voices too. All right, anyway, we're here, guys. F it, we're live. Technical difficulties aside, this is the Space Bro Show, where we bring to you the best, the absolute best of Star Citizen every week, Friday night, 10:30 p.m. CST. And I am your host, Matachi, and with me tonight is one of our old, 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 old friends, Mr. Stoutman PR. Hi, Stout. Not that old. Not that old. Hello, everybody. It's all right. Well, if you fall down, we got moonshiners to pick you up. It's all good. So there you go. He's got you covered, brother. All right. And of course, my partner in crime and constant host of Space Bro Show, Mr. Moonshiners, is here, as always. Stay What's up, gentlemen? Good to be here. Yep. Show us your tits. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you can tell Mr. McKetton's here, and he's influenced by some other guests. Why don't you introduce your buddies up there? Hey, I've, I've got uh, from uh, left to right on your screen there, I've got my friend here, Supreme Tokyo, my friend WTFosaurus, my friend Captain Flint. Uh, you guys probably don't know, but they're shy, so they're, they're probably not going to be speaking much tonight. But they wanted to at least uh, say hi to all y'all. There you but, go. Uh, Gentlemen, how are you? Mm-hmm. Hi, hi, guys. It's okay. We understand. You're shocked to be on the show. No, all new people that Eric drug in with him. You know, but oh, yeah. they're, they're all yeah. shocked and look, stunned look to be though. here. Yeah, I guess, he, Eric's guest can't talk. Only he can talk. So. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're so shocked to be on this show that they can't even <laughs> blink. They're just, like, frozen. It's all in time. All right. We're going to start out this week. We're going to talk oh, now about... Now I've got me licking me. There you oh, go. I dreamt of this that day. gets a little I creepy. Dreamt of this day. What you need is a, a clone image on the other side, you so you can Tokyo have Devil Eric. Yep. You can have Devil Eric on one shoulder, and then, well, I guess there isn't another Eric, but you know something else on the other shoulder. I guess a Tokyo, and uh, you know, kind of advising you what to do in life. That'd be interesting. All right, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna go around the room, and everybody can talk about what they've been up to lately, and all that jazz. So, Stoutman, <laughs> let's start out with you. What have you been doing lately, buddy? Since we haven't seen you on the show. Oh, um, just been streaming, playing games. You know, I've been doing a lot of Subnautica lately, which is a fun game. That one just got a patch this last week. Added sweet. a bunch of stuff. Sweet, sweet. So, yeah, definitely. Um, Stoutman's been around doing his thing. Moon, what have you been up to? Anything, any grand events this last week that uh, you want to share? Nah. Nah? Nah, just doing the same old, same old. Uh, we, had, we had our second podcast on last Monday, and that went off pretty well. Uh yeah, do the same old man. Streaming, streaming them Star Citizens, shooting, shooting fools in the verse. Yeah, doing good stuff. Yeah, keeping it hype, keeping counting down to Citizen Con like mm-hmm. everybody else. Hell yeah, it's good. Yes, stuff. sir. Absolutely. And, uh, Eric had an adventure today, right? Eric, why don't you tell him about your day today and what you've been up to? Uh, not not much happened. Not much. Actually, the the real adventure was last night. Yeah, uh, I went to Pax West. I was supposed to go to Pax West today and just hang out for the day. But uh, last night, Tokyo arrived. He's like, dude, you need to come join me because we're going to this this party with, run by publishers and stuff. So just drive up here and come hang out. You're only two hours away. I'm like, oh, hell with it. I so I drove up there and get there. And first of all, like the address he gives me, there's nobody there. Like I'm, I'm in a back alley and I'm like, great. I'm going to get mugged it's and or trap. raped. Yeah. Well, it turns out that the club gave everybody a bad address. It was like one street over. So I finally oh, meet shit. him, go inside. And, of course, they're inside Captain Flint and uh, WTFosaurus. And uh, it was an open bar, so some of them were a little sloshed. I'm not going <laughs> to say which ones. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Flint. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> no, the, but uh, it, for those of you guys that watch WTF and Tokyo and Flint, and, and uh, if you have tried to imagine what they're like in real life, if you watch their streams, but then multiply their personalities by, like, ten and that's them in real life. It's the same character, but it's it's literally larger than life. They don't put on an act. If anything, they tone themselves down for the stream. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll say this right now. The most fun I've had in a long time up in Seattle was hanging out with WTF last night. Because that guy is always going 100 miles an hour, and he's got the attention span of a squirrel. So everything's just <laughs> new and, and impressive and amazing for him. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. No, and then uh, man, we've been we've been getting a lot of hype all around. Still, I think the the carryover from Gamescom for everybody has been really awesome. Uh, we appreciate all the new viewers. Hopefully, we get some new viewers tonight on the Space Pro Show as well. Um, I crossed uh, thirty two hundred follows today. That was that was pretty amazing. Woo-hoo! I didn't. I got almost a hundred follows today alone, 
and it was just it was really amazing. Um, and just to give everybody a couple extra tips, we are still running the sub uh, the sub donation that Val's had going on. And uh, yeah, I I don't have prescription sunglasses anymore because I have a four year old son that broke them, so that's why I don't have them, <laughs> Val. <laughs> But no, we're only we're only a couple subs away from unlocking the saber giveaway, which uh, we'll we'll give away at the end of the show if we hit that goal. And then we're seven subs away from a harbinger. On top of that, thanks to Val, it's like pretty crazy stuff, like four hundred dollars in spaceships. But if we do give away anything during the show, I will insist that you uh, make sure you follow all my buddies. So we'll make sure that we're executing that command. It's the exclamation mark space bros in chat, and the mods will take care of that, or you guys can, and uh, that should give you links for everyone here. And if not, the mods will fix it, because I trust Toy to actually do that. But anyway, guys, so this week in Star Citizen, we've had some uh, pretty pretty hypeable info. I didn't expect a lot, to be honest. I didn't expect anything. You know, last week was, you know, kind of, you know, they're coming off Gamescom, right? They're super busy. They're exhausted from prepping for that show. And I was just like, you know... They're going to phone it in a little bit, you know, and they should. They're going to hold some stuff because we got Citizen Conrad in the corner. But uh, I was pretty impressed, you know, with what we saw and what was going on and uh, all that jazz. So, uh, Stoutman, you watched uh, ATV, I assume, as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What um, What was the most impressive thing you saw on there for you, just out of the top of your head? What, what was the thing that stood out the most for you? I think the um, driving in the rover across... You know, through, you know, over the terrain with the guy shooting out the back. I think that's really good. That's going to add a whole new level of gameplay that we've all been waiting for. And it's nice to see how the wheels fold up so it fits in a smaller yes. ship. It still fits yep. into the constellation, so I can add one to yep. my to any constellation. It looks like that's pretty cool. Yep. So that's a big I got question one. So too, I'm, so I'm waiting good. to drive it. I'm yeah. just assuming it's going to have some type of LTI. You know, yeah, that's a big question that, they for, can answer, right? For, they well, and the same thing with the buggies. Fifteen yeah. bucks a buggy. It's like you know, no, do not tell me blow up once it's gone. Uh, uh-uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, not with that's, how explosive they are. I mean, yeah. th- those things are definitely going to break. Well, Pretty either make them in, either make them invulnerable, you know, just flat out invulnerable where they never get destroyed, or they just respawn after a set amount of time, and that's yeah. just the way it is. It's nice and simple, you know. Yeah. So, something like that. But I, th- I think it's going to be fun to they're driving around. It's going to be cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Moon, how about you? What what was your big takeaway? Oh man, the uh, the Tatooine. I don't know. Uh, the 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 exploded or not exploded? The crashed Starfarer with the with the with the camp setup, and it's like all in engine with the atmosphere going by, and you just see the gray cap buggy parked over there. Um, just seeing like all the the uh, to find the uh, the shipwrecks in the universe, and just like. I don't know, man. It was beautiful. I was just really excited to see, uh, you know, the, the the desert planet, and you know the the dust flying by, and it just it just looks so freaking cool. Yeah, and, and if these are going to be like throughout the verse, I'm yeah. so excited yeah. to come across and these I, things. I know. I didn't remember you 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 said you didn't catch all our TV or anything today, but um, I caught a little bit of it. A little bit of it. The what I didn't catch mm-hmm. the very beginning because I was running a little bit behind on that. But that's what I watched yeah. at the very beginning. Okay, well you we'll have to talk after so. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. basically the the one thing I did catch is when they were reviewing that whole aspect of the artwork and the environment he did because it's not really even art. That's a 3D environment he created out of the assets they have on hand, and it took him only one day to make that. Because they already mm-hmm. have those assets, that blew my mind. That he literally was able to set that scene with the with the whole little you know episode seven look to it, the bond down Starfare and all that stuff on the ground, the whole thing within one day. I was like, that's yeah. pretty impressive with all the effects and stuff. He's like literally the winds on a slider, and he can do it's all environmental effects. They didn't paint over it. They didn't do anything. That's actual in engine, the whole deal. And I was like, that's fucking cool. So they keep yeah. talking about building tools, and that's an example of how fast you can get stuff done and you got good tools. Yeah, absolutely. When we have these pallet sets for the ships and the environments and all that stuff, it's just this shit's gonna blow up over the next year. People don't even realize how fast stuff's gonna drop. Eric, how about you? What do you, what was your big takeaway from uh this well, week ATV? I, I was I was pretty psyched when they let they told us that Star Citizen Alpha two point five features improved landing system, uh new flyable ships. Uh, and Grim Hex. I, yeah. I thought that was some pretty good information that we didn't know yet or hadn't heard for the last three weeks over and over and <laughs> over again. 
<laughs> no, obviously it was the uh, uh, the the derelicts. I, we all expected them to yeah. just rehash stuff from from GamesCon and stuff we already knew. So the derelicts was was a nice surprise. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to running into those things and and finding dead bodies and still living bodies and you know all sorts aliens. of things. Yeah, just explore yeah. them. That's really cool. I think for me, I mean, hands down, and I've talked about this for, I don't know, months, the cargo. I mean, yeah. just seeing the cargo system actually go in there, regardless of your takeaway from it, I know a lot of people had mixed reactions to what some of the stuff they said regarding cargo, and we'll dive into that, but the car, just seeing like, hey guys, and here's the cargo, boom, 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 and a whole five minute little segment, and you're going to be able to pick some shit up, and uh, you'll have it auto-loaded if you're a space dock. But if you're salvaging or a pirate, you're going to have to manually load it because they need that kind of, you know, time sink into it and stuff. So if you're getting it from that aspect, it's going to be a little more, you know, uh, difficult for you. But for people that are space truckers, they're going to be able to dock up, get auto-loaded, get the hell on their journey. Because there's going to be some travel time anyway involved in the game from what Chris Roberts is saying. And then be able to unload it and collect their dues, you know. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm super excited about seeing the beginning of basically the economy. This is the beginning. I know they talked about it with the guns and the liquor, you know, Korea, but this to me is the real beginning of the economy is when we have cargo in. You, so, you know what? As soon right. as I saw the, the cargo pods popping in on their own, the first thing I thought of, and I guess this is too much time in, uh, in PTU testing and whatnot for this game, but the first thing I thought of is we got to get as many people as we can standing on the spots where the cargo goes in and then have somebody load the cargo and see if yeah. we kill them, if we rocket them out, if yeah. we squish them, if they get trapped. Because that's that's like my immediate thought is how many new ways can we come up with to kill each other using cargo yep. now that it's in the in the game? Absolutely. And you know you know that cargo is going to break loose from the physics grids because everything does. Well, and and they, I can't wait for that to happen and, and people to get squished by flying cargo well, and in the, the back thing I'm interested in Yeah, is, can we notice, drop cargo in people's heads? Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. They had, like, oh, actual genius. markers on the ground for where they go from that video, too. I mean, that was something interesting. And we'll, mm -hmm. We're going to queue up that video right now, as a matter of fact, as we continue Are we going to be able to put people into cargo boxes? And, and well, and Toy had a them. great question there. Mm. Um, that, yeah, I need to sharpen my good one. Debris. He wants me to sharpen my specs since I shaded in. We'll start a donation for the two hundred fifty dollars sunglasses I have to buy. No, the um, the whole thing I was interested in. Toy brought this up as a great aspect. He said, "Well, with the grab hands demo, what well, we actually oh, we're being rated. Oh snap! Woo! Oh snap! Woo it's Ash, man. Oh, Pick, oh. WTF! WTF! Grab your gun and defend the place. Come on, come on, <laughs> space do something. Bros, space Bros defense. in chat. We need defense. Explanation mark, Bros. Why are you just sitting there staring? Yo, thank you for the host. No, man, yeah. Ashley, the queen of crude. That's it. There she is. Ashley, so awesome. We love you, Ash. Make sure, oh, guys, cool. make sure. I got, a whole, I got a whole special one here for her. Ash is so cool. She's going to hang out. You need to come on the Space Bro show sometime, Ash, for sure. We'll do more links for Ash here and stuff. Make sure we get her in there a bunch of times. But, guys, you got to give Ash a follow. She is super awesome, super cool. Look at all that. Can't yeah. Smash. Right there. I, I snuck it in between her raid. Guys, link that. <laughs> follow her. She is super awesome. There you go. <laughs> the Princess of Pawnage. That's right. The Dame of Destruction, the Queen of Crude, Ashley. Smash! Can't click That's on so the cool. link because it's moving too fast. I know, fast. it's going too fast! Cause <laughs> Ash, <laughs> don't hurt us, Ash. All right, anyway, so we're talking Star Citizen, guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Welcome over here from Miss Ashley's awesome super stream, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Hang out with us. We're talking Star Citizen. We're going to kind of do the whole thing that we always do where we kind of get, get some of our fellow Star Citizen streamers, and we're going to break down what we've seen in development this week and what's happening. So we're just getting ready to dive into this scene where we go over to the vids. Boop, boop. Streamception boop, for boop. a moment. Enjoy that. <laughs> Enjoy that action. And we'll, we'll kind of uh, skim through this. We're not going to listen to all the audio, obviously. It's got style in here. I, I, can't a, believe, though, I can't believe, though, you were being raided and WTF didn't even lift a finger to help I know. you. Stand it right talk. behind me. We're going to yeah. talk about that <laughs> very soon, Mr. WTF, Mr. Soros. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe we'll listen to this little sound. So here. For 
Here we Three go. Zero. We're gonna this have. Is this where they talk about two point five? Pick up a box. <laughs> oh, take it to your ship. Put it in Cargo. Your ship and take that ship to Mars. So which will allow us to sell pick whatever up? you find. Yeah. No, it's gonna. I, I like the system. Salvage ships you find out in the debris field. Stuff you take off other people's ships that you pirate. Yeah. Stuff you're gonna get given on Here missions. You can also go to the market, pick up a whatever you want to buy. Box, box, selling. carry the box. Yeah, Picking exactly. It down, putting it down. Ship, and then you can take it they had to really well, CG so that uh, wobble to get the whole all sorts time. Of trade routes. Well, here's my question. We'll mute it. We'll uh, just kind of watch it here in the background. So you can pick up that style of box, right? <laughs> and it's like a whole unique style of box by itself. Whoa. But all the rest of it's very form fitting, right? And it's like, but you can carry the one special box by itself. Yeah. All that. I'm like, that's kind of odd, but. You know, I can get with that. My question is right here, this shot. Okay, so we got all these boxes, right? They're obviously filling up a Starfarer. It's showing examples of all the different type of cargo. And it will be auto-loaded when you're at the dock, like we were saying. Um, if you're if you're doing a load from A to B somewhere. Um, say you're a pirate. Say, say the ship is wrecked or whatever. And this becomes salvage. How do you drag that shit out of there? Yeah, you're, in zero, you're in zero G and it's floating. You just push it. With okay, your well, let's say planet side then. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, and just hypothetically here. Well, I mean, they've got those little anti gravity pads that do it, but yeah, you're not necessarily. You don't want to do that on every single one. It take yeah. hours to fill this up. That's not good uh -huh. gameplay. If you got a small reliant, a couple pieces of cargo, somebody wants to role play, then they yeah. do it. They gave us the option, I think. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I, I'm just curious I, about it, though. I mean, it's, it's. A lot of well, these... I also imagine that not everything is going to be salvageable there, that it's going to be like, you know, a certain percentage will be considered destroyed, and maybe yeah. what we salvage is what's broken loose yeah. from mm -hmm. there. You know, like a, a box is broken open and you salvage, like the, those ones that obviously hold mm -hmm. liquids or gases, if they're broken open, you're not salvaging anything from that. But say that the, the random boxes there, I'm sure that yeah. if they break open and maybe they got those little boxes <laughs> inside, each one containing a certain amount of units well, of metal or space heroin or whatever it is that, they, that they're smuggling there. Exactly, and that's the point that, uh, again, I wanted to show this aspect because Toy was alluding to, because if you saw the original Grabby Hands demo from, I don't know, last year sometime, and we know that's we've talked about that before when we saw the Gamescom thing, that it's not really Grabby Hands, but it kind of is, but it's kind of not. But if you look at the forums and the different threads, there's a lot of talk from the community about the Grabby Hands again, and it's just off that demo. Now, the question uh, still remains, can you access some of these cartons? Are you going to be able to get into these and extract some things with it? Say I have a Reliant, and there's a huge like container of guns, and it says on the outside guns. Am I not able to access that, or can I extract some of the load of what we can carry, put it in my containers, and load it on my ship? Those We're going to be able to access stuff to. inside the containers. They told us we could. Exactly. They told us we could before. They haven't said that with these specific containers. They said we could see the contents of them in this one because I watched it several yeah. times. No, they, no, they told us contain, we, we, containers will be able to have them in our hangar, be able to like fill it up with guns yeah. or whatever to, to load for storage so it's not just laying around on the ground. We'll be able to do that. So we'll be able to get in the containers yeah. and pull stuff out and put stuff in and move it around and stuff like that. Yeah, they, absolutely. They, I don't... I don't know though. That. I want to see more detail on that again. I do. I want. I know they've mentioned that, and that was my intention to think that. But I also didn't realize that auto loading the cargo would be like poof. There's cargo there. I thought it would be a time sink. You'd see NPCs do it, or you, like come back in 30 minutes and your ship's loaded. You know what I mean? Something like that was what I was picturing, especially after seeing some of the AI on the ground and Art Corp and stuff like doing their little move stuff around and all that. I just. I didn't expect it to kind of be auto appear in there. It makes sense. Well, I don't have a complaint about it, but I just didn't expect it. I guess. I think I think Rand is correct. I think magically loading cargo is probably a temporary measure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think we're going to see an, an in between area where there, it's still magically loaded, but mm -hmm. it's magically loaded over time by AI or you know yeah. something it along those lines. It sounds like they're giving us a choice. Do you want to auto load or do you want to load it yourself? No, ta we're talking about just the, the general the auto load function. Uh, early on, they were talking about how even auto load would take would require NPCs to do the job and stuff like that. And, and then we got this magic fee period. probably to and, have them do it versus yeah. yourself, those type of things. And, and, and I think what sense. we're seeing right now is just an, an in between between that yeah. and uh, and you know uh, what what we don't have. Mm -hmm. Which right now we have nothing. And to get the NPCs to do it, we have to have the subsumption in. They have to test mm -hmm. it over and over again, all the sorts of things. So yeah, absolutely. But 
I, I, I want to find more, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this as a first iteration. Honestly, I didn't expect to have these kind of assets. I thought it would be like varying versions of what we saw, those cubes, you know, just like all these really vanilla cubes all over the place. And it, it looks really neat and interesting, and it's got all sorts of different little LEDs on it and stuff like that. Um, but again, on certain aspects, you know, I think if you wanted to capture some of this loot, even if you had a accommodating ship, this is another point here. Like, okay, look at the size boxes they put here. These will not fit through the when you go to the Freelancer one, not this one, but some of the doors where you can store at. Now, this one's okay because the Reliance got the large bay in the back. But there's no way you're dragging outside this Freelancer. Oh, this pops up right here. Yeah. These right here. Those aren't going through the door. Well, I'm not picking that up. And, and get, I'm can just they, saying. Can they be forgiven if this is, if it is just like a pop? I would, I don't care if it just pops into my ship. I don't yeah, care I don't either. I, I, I don't, don't want like, happen. I, I don't need. Yeah, I'm fine with it popping it. I'm. I don't want to wait long periods of time for lots of cargo. Yeah. I think it's just an option. You can you can you can do it instant or you can role play it. It's yeah. it's cool that we get the choice. Well, I don't think you have the option to role play this because I don't. I think if the Starfarer's dead and you get this cargo there, he ain't getting it through the door. If it pops over, that's fine. But they were talking about it was going to take time for salvagers and pirates to unload the cargo of derelict ships or damaged ships and pull them over. So to me, that reads that's not a popping okay. thing. That's that's unloading. That's not loading what you just bought. There's two different things. No, th but I'm talking about unloading. Starfarer's going around, fully loaded and laden like this. It gets killed. It gets captured. It gets boarded. I want to steal that shit. How do I do that? Cut a hole in the hole. Will they let you do that? That'd be awesome. I'd be into that's, that. That's, they've, they've said that's going to be part of boarding mechanics for a long time. I assume yeah. they're still planning on that. Just cut the ship in half, right? Yeah. And yep. Yeah. Back cut it, cut it right. Where, yep. I could do that. Hmm. Just, just, that, that just, just, open, just open the door mechanically. Open the, Just open the door manually. Well, it's a lot easier. It's, that's a lot easier than cutting a hole in a hole. It won't fit. But, like, look at that door behind there. That's the door out to the cargo bay. Yeah. And look at that, that big box on the right. That doesn't look like it fit through that door. That's what they're saying. Yeah. And uh, some of the cargo they're showing does not fit through the doors. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that's what he's talking inaccurate. about. Yeah. 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 And, and, if and it's that's what I'm saying. The and they're going to change it. That's fine. But I mean, as good as these assets look, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to rework ships to fit this, in other words. I just am curious because at first, when it was popping and stuff, I was like, oh, cool. It'll just, you'll go in, you'll find your own ship, you'll go through the manifest, be like, I want this and this and this, and just auto load it to your own ship, no problem. But then they said, oh, salvagers and pirates, it'll take time because you have to manually load it. I'm like, man, load that? I'm like, what? <laughs> I like reckless. I like reckless fury's idea. Just use a reclaimer. Just chew the whole ship up. <laughs> <laughs> everything <laughs> salvage. <laughs> like, all right, and now we've good. got the, the the organic goop. That's what used to be yeah. the food they were hauling, and we've got the metal goop over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> explosives. The answer is always explosive. <laughs> Yeah, so liberal I mean, application of shaped charges will fix I, just about I totally any. Forgi I totally forgive him for any aspect of this. It's going to modify or change this to the temporary thing. But I mean, even in areas where I could pull it out, I I don't think I'm going to manually load that shit. That's huge. That's like yeah. some big. I mean, it's like, hey, hey, Eric, uh, I might need a little help over here, bro. You yeah. think you could grab that into this whole semi truck Like, what about container? like what about the whole E? I mean, some yeah. some of this has to be done like. Honestly, or, we don't need animation. What about so. tractor beams? Maybe, maybe. You yeah, use tractor. The, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe you'd have We're to. We're not going to make you watch everything be moved all the time. And that's bear, that's ridiculous. Bear in mind, yeah, I'll be that, immersed just knowing this stuff is in my ship. I don't need to see it. That's what I'm saying. But they it. said there's a time sink for pirates and salvagers for it purposely. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but they were talking about the smaller okay. items. They, loading they were, a ship and, and taking salvage are two different things. Well, loading no, I'm not talking about loading. I'm talking about just salvaging and stealing. The reality of it is. When you're salvaging a ship, even if you have the ability to get all that stuff out of there, all of it is not going to be available to you because it's going to have been damaged yeah. or whatnot during the, the assault. And that's, I think, yeah. probably what they're going to end up doing is a, a certain the percentage of, of the cargo is just going to go to crap. Yeah, and you can't get it. It's damaged beyond well, repair or whatever. And, and that would encourage you to take the whole ship instead of blow it up too, right? Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Right. exactly. That's yeah. another thing that I believe Reckless Fury said. Just steal the whole damn ship. Yeah. You know, if mm -hmm. you want all the cargo, why not take the ship along with it? Yeah. Have That's a repair crew with be. your pirate team. Yeah, there don't blow go. up the ship. You just do minimal damage, just disable it, and then you can have to, pick everything have to yell you at Soros, be like, Soros, quit using the shotgun around the cargo. <laughs> <laughs> all, the all the cargo. Is training out. <laughs> yep. All the booze. Yeah, well, there goes the beer and milk mixed. I'm not drinking that shit. It's done. It's done. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it's really cool to see that. Um, I was originally thinking this is what you'd be doing. You'd be walking around with a box. 
<laughs> and you'd have to stack <laughs> yeah. each fucking box yeah. like like here's one a box. scu at here's a time a box. here's a box oh geez here's a box i'm like oh my god it's it's like some high definition minecraft all of a sudden right it's like you got cubes and boxes <laughs> and playing tetris <laughs> with them and stuff but yeah i want to be able to open it like those white containers i want to be able to see what's inside and determine if i want to take that or if it's something good or you know, if you're if salvager, you kind of want to go through the process and do that stuff. So and there, there's another thing that, that one of the reasons with this pop in and snap into place thing may exist is mm -hmm. uh, to get around issues with the local physics grids. Because we know <laughs> yeah. those, those physics grids are buggy as hell sometimes. Yep. And the less work that they have to do to, that relies on the physics grids, the better for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. 100%. And, if, and, and I'm, I'm betting that when these things get in there, they're mm -hmm. considered part of the ship instead of something that's inserted into the ship. You know, and just sitting there like a component. They're probably those slots are probably item ports. It becomes cargo, like a, a locked item, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and the cargo is treated like it would, a gun or any other item port is attached. It's just attached to an item port it fits to, and it sits there until you tell it to be removed through your Moby glass. And All I'd right, be totally down with that. that. That's what I'd like to see. I mean, I, you know, I know they're talking time sinks on it, but I'd love to be able to like crack the manifest in a derelict ship, you know, may have some power and go through my Moby glass and say, all right, boys, we're taking these three, these crates, leave this crap and just take exactly a mark mm -hmm. and flag what you want and get the hell out of there. I don't want to sit there and play like a four hour game of like, let Matachi go through the crates and boxes inside the ship because somebody else is going to be coming along and <laughs> it's going to be a big mess. So that, that'd be really bad. I don't, I don't want any piece of that, but I'm super excited again to see that stuff coming online and, uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be hype. So here's here's the rover aspect they were talking about in ATV, and we'll kind of go through some of the screens of that because it's just sexy. I haven't seen anything they've sold for oh, fifty bucks be this sexy ever. Mm -hmm. This is badass sexy. I mean, it's got the compartmentalized. You got screens up there to do stuff. It's got look. It's, got it's already box. set up for dual analog sticks. It's like ah, it's <laughs> like it's really cool. So. Very Do you cool. see it has a wheel? It has a wheel, it has sticks, and it has a keyboard. It yeah. is the ultimate in gaming. Yeah, it's basically like, dude, your desk, right? <laughs> who has, who, my who desk here is a gamer? Like and you guys in chat, who here as a racer have they actually have a wheel who can now set that up amongst their uh, dual hotasses and keyboard can now have a wheel? I still and, got an old steering wheel and pedals. Yeah, I still got that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that looks Southern so Jumper? good, man. Yes, I, I do believe the, the Ursa comes with the Aquila, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm excited to see the variants mm -hmm. of these rovers, right? Because there's, what, three different types that they have? Well, yeah, the, uh, uh, the Carrick is getting its own version that's based Lynx. off the Ursa. Yeah, yeah so that'll be Lynx. interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I kind of wish I would have bought one now. We gave away five or six. <laughs> I wish I would have got <laughs> me one. I'm like, because yeah. that's a badass. That's a badass. There's still a big question, though, like we talked about, about the insurance on it. Because originally they had said when you were getting them in combination with your ship, and this is really cool how it actually loads, and they said, don't worry, it's going to fit on all the Connies. Um, the, the aspect that they said originally that it would go with the insurance of your ship, right? I mean, because that was what, the only way you could get them right. before. But now it's like, well, that wouldn't make any sense. If I have an LTI Connie, I could just buy one and it just works. What happens if I have one and I don't have a Connie or a ship to tie it to? I mean, that's that's a question that they still need to answer on that end, because I believe it was asked and they all looked at each other and go, hmm. So I don't think they have that answer yeah. yet, but it's still uh, you don't well, have to worry about people it. People want to right? insure their rovers. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'd insure two dollars if I could, you know, it's like to some degree. people want to insure their guns. So, yes, yeah. they want to insure the rover. You know, it's yeah. Well, they want to insure NPCs, cargo guns. I mean, I don't think yeah. anybody's going to lose anything in Star Citizen. Everybody's going to go around like, wow, it doesn't matter if I die. because Comprehensive like, I full coverage on everything. Except, unless you're a pirate, at which point uh, the, if, yeah, if you're an host. outlaw, insurance is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get in some That's cases. It. We'll offer the first pirate yeah. insurance. Pirates are going well, to the biggest, the biggest no, heartaches when they lose their stuff that they get. They did say to. there there is going to be insurance offered by less than reputable sources for less than reputable people, but that also comes with the risk of maybe they don't even pay out. You know, maybe or it's super <laughs> highway robbery prices. On yeah, it. who knows? I mean, so that's pretty cool. I I mean, this rover is going to be really neat. It's going to be. I want to see some military variants that are like, you know, stripped out of anything except maybe troop transport. Those type of things, I think it'd be cool. Maybe an extra gun set on it. 
but I'm really impressed with how they've adapted all the suspension on them and be able to drive about anywhere in these things. That looks cool right there. It's so cool looking. I mean, they've already, it's amazing how far they've already you looks know, so like, cool. done all this stuff. Dude, I'm so excited to drive around a planet. Yep. I know. In, in a space game, I this, this is awesome. <laughs> like... I'm so excited about space, but this this was great. Yeah. The you know <laughs> them showing the the dragonfly, you know. Oh my god! It I'm so excited to like go around these stupid planets. It's oh uh, my I god! Know. Look at that! Look at that, the dirt coming off the back, shooting, shooting guns. It's like coming he's like, out he's like of it. Freaking it's gangster. Like, yeah. <laughs> 30s gangster. Oh, so they even awesome, used the man. word drive by. <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah. just do a drive by so on cool. the back. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And Mickey. And then we go into from there. I mean, it's like everything's really geared towards the plant side. Yo, I mean, not Nathan. only do they have the super sexy dragonflies going, right? But mm -hmm. uh, just seeing them glide across the ground here in these upcoming scenes is amazing. It's like, and what suit is what? that? What? What? Is that like the, uh, the Halo Rider dirt bike suit? Because I they, want they, that. Pe people are speculating it's the new light marine armor for this. Going to probably come with two point six because mm. they have they have said that two point six will include armor and costume uh, updates. That's cool. To uh, like, to like fit it light, with light like, marine uh, slash scout uh, armor and stuff like that. That would yeah. be cool because yes. makes sense, especially on a dragon. Because thing. right, yeah, I mean, right now technically our light armor is just our uh, a reskin. Of uh, <laughs> you know our regular flight suits, you know for the most part. So it'd yeah. be nice to have something distinctly different. Yeah, and I was all gear, and there shows some of the concept of the reverse uh, seat for the passenger. Um, and I was I all just love how excited this guy was about making it. He's <laughs> oh, well, he said he said it's like hands down like these. I think the Dragonfly he said was his favorite ship he made. Yeah, you know ever mm -hmm. so. And like I, a kid with Legos right there, oh, isn't he? He's just like, I'm going to make a space motorcycle. Exactly. And it can float on the surface. And then it, it can came fly. Out, the yeah. came out pretty cool. It, it's a good it's a good oh. vehicle. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And yeah. we, we had a whole question list that we had formatted last night after me and the stream had watched uh, ATV. And, you know, then they bring the guy on and they're like, oh, this is just the artist. Don't ask any technical questions. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, well, I just want to know, like, how far up can you deploy it from out of Freelancer? Can I be in an atmosphere, like, 30 feet up and deploy it? Or do I have to, like, be on the ground to deploy it? Or those type of things. And then uh, Toy had a great one. He said, what? Why happens if they flip over? Or can they even flip over? Is it flippable? Does it just automatically gravity well there or it's destroyed? I mean, it seems to me cool like stuff. if it would flip over, you just turn off uh, maglev mode and go back into flight mode and fly up and yeah. roll back around and land again. Yeah, I, I mean that's the, that's the beauty of the design. Think about the the range of combat you'll have with this because you can be in maglev or yeah. what they call ground lev mode, and you're fighting somebody else and you, you don't have the upper hand, so you flip it off and turn it into flight mode, and then you do like a barrel roll or a loop yeah. or whatever. Oh, it's, sick! Uh, yeah, I already I mean, bitch with Captain Richard all day long. Barrel roll on his so on cool. his dragon like barrel roll, barrel roll. So, but uh, how fast is he going here? I I want I want to know the top speed of this thing. I know we haven't I know seen. Gonna, it. I know it's look, not going to be crazy look, we've fast. We've never seen it selected. The, the, they're going to be here. changing that on us constantly when they put this mm, thing yeah. comes out. But they've they're never sure. shown this thing in cruise. Even on the demo on there, it was always SCM, and it was always top end. I saw it was like forty meters a second. You know, on SCM, we've not seen it in cruise mode yet. I don't think there is a cruise mode. It is, is right beside it, like this little block right there, and you can't see it good in this. The Gamescom one you won on on this one right here on this side. It says SCM, and on this air box, when it highlights your shift gear, it says cruise. Hmm. I was like, so it'll it'll do all of it. Is it so yeah, I mean, yeah, the, because uh, it, well, if it's flyable, I guess it has a cruise mode too, even though it doesn't have quantum or anything. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, a motorcycle should chase shit down. Uh, okay, people are saying in chat that they specifically said it will not be able to fly on the planet. I guarantee you that will change because there will be an uproar because it makes no goddamn sense if it can fly in space that it can't fly on the planet like every other. It spaceship. is going to be flying on a planet, not just not to a planet. Yeah, you cannot just fly won't. down and up. You can't. Yeah. You can't go from space to, to the, through the atmosphere yeah. on it. There's no. There's not enough shield. You yeah. can't enter or exit the atmosphere because you'll burn up. Right. Yeah. Now that that makes sense. Uh, yeah, because you don't have anything to protect you from from burning up. But to say that it's not going to be able to fly in atmosphere, if that's just, if that's what they're trying to say, 
uh, they'll change it right away because people will flip a shit fit. The uh, Gamescom yeah. video had it flying in atmosphere. That's exactly, that's what I was saying too. Yeah, yeah they did, Chris they had to tell like the guy to go into ground level mode. Yeah, because he was like floating above the ground, like 30, 40 feet, deploying it. It's like go down to ground mode. Grand body, it doesn't matter. All the spaceships are if they have spaceship thrusters, they are capable of flying in atmo. They 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 designed it that way. Yeah. So again, if they say no flying in atmo then uh, they're going to have to justify why only this one ship can't do it. And it's not going to work, and they'll change it, because they've done stuff like this before, and they've yeah. ended up changing it. And they did they do mm. designate it as a ship, even though, you know, we call it Space Motorcycle and everybody else does. It's still They still call it a ship, so I would think uh, that every, they would do something with that. Everything with the game, they try to implement it one way, and if it doesn't work, then they change it. You yeah, know, absolutely. It's, they're trying to, trying to get a result, and it's not always what you first think it's going to be. Yeah. Or that's they'll, or they'll come that's up with for a really us cool to figure story. it out if it works or not. Yeah, they'll come <laughs> out with a really cool story if they don't want it to fly for some reason. They'll have some weird fucking crazy shit. But they'll have to justify it to us for sure, regardless. Well, so. I mean, does it have the same kind of like uh, thrusters or, you know... Well, that's just it. It's one it, thing for like other... It, it, it other hovers ships, on I mean, land, it, it, right? it hovers. It hovers on so, land. So like, that's why it can be in space. But in space, you be... don't need that much propulsion in space to get going, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to like maintain altitude... You just have to be able to have some inertia to go. So yeah, it, they might just say that. I mean, who knows? So we'll yeah. have to just see. Oh, All they want... gotta do is make and you then... run into a bird and knock you off if you go too fast. If they don't want you to go fast, there you they go, can go do spawn it. bird. <laughs> you need like a good <laughs> ramp. <laughs> oh, look at look at that first person view, <laughs> man. That looks so freaking right cool. Really near the floor. Yeah. So the wow. Rush. I'm, 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 I love it. Rocks. And you can Anything hear like it that. though. You That's can hear it. I got the uh -huh. sound on it now. You can hear it like humming, rush and stuff. <laughs> I really wanted to get all across of the that different stuff terrains. It's in really cool for the dragonfly. Really so good. In stark contrast. It looks like a few times. I want. I kind of want to see it roll over. The plan. I know. If they, well, can, and if then, they can do that. And then the same thing. Even if you could roll this over, what about the rover? I know I'm gonna roll that bitch. How do you get right it back there. up? Because like that <laughs> ain't no like you know get the jack. That's why it needs LTI. That's yeah, why it needs LTI because you know you're gonna roll it over and you're just gonna have yeah. to leave it there. Yeah, Black so. Dragonfly is gonna mm -hmm. have it's gonna have anti-roll technology built in where it's gonna be really <laughs> hard to roll it, and if yeah. you do roll it, it's almost always gonna end up, up right side up unless it's yeah. busted in pieces. It's I mean, they, can, they can do the same thing with the rover, I guess. Well, I mean, you'll be able, to, well, you'll be able to, you'll be able to roll it, but it'll it'll have a tendency to land on its feet. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. The rover is wheels. That's a little different. You can you don't have the you don't have the the whatever force field or anti gravity pads. You don't have that with the rover. Oh, that's a good question. It, Val wants to know how many people are going to run out of fuel with the dragonfly. Like they'll be cruising around doing all this <laughs> shit, and then run out of gas in the middle of nowhere out there. I'll be like probably a lot. Probably well, a, uh, yeah. can well, I mean is there fuel? If it's using I mean, grab plating, it, I would assume it's just using power plant like every other ship, so there wouldn't be any fuel. Maybe it runs out of juice. Maybe it runs out of power. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It's a good question. Can you? By 2946, we haven't worked out a proper battery? Come on. <laughs> well, that's 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 what uh, all the ships use. The ships use a, a fusion core and a... And a, or something like a fusion core and a quantum core. I can't remember what their, what their specific words are, but yeah. they're basically unlimited power supplies. And if you can yeah. fit one on an M50, it wouldn't take much to fit one on a... Uh, or a, a Merlin. It wouldn't take much to fit one on a Dragonfly, then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's a smaller version. Mm -hmm. But that's also, again, why, why I say the, the argument of there's not enough power or it, it, it can't fly. I, I just know they're going to end up changing it. They'll end up changing it not long, probably not even uh, before it makes it a PTU the first time. Because that's what's going to be the number one feedback on it is going to be it needs to be able to fly in atmosphere. This is stupid that it can't. Did you guys check out this page up here? It's pretty awesome. Yeah, this one's it's really cool. The, it's got all the lore. Yeah. Oh, uh, Alicianus? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. She's got all the breakdowns so that we have a template. If you want to write something that fits within the lore, it's a great database to where you can actually go mm -hmm. access it and see everything. She won the MVP, and it was well-deserved because that's a lot of tedious work there and actually made a spreadsheet. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I played Eve for a long time. I love my spreadsheets. And it's colorful, too. It's really nice. So, but yeah, it's a great, great uh, database there, especially for people who are interested in writing fiction and want to keep the, it the, relevant, you know? Yeah. There, there's so much lore, and, it, and it's really hard to, like, you know, dig through all this, like, back data. Absolutely. Uh, it's nice that, you know, it's all, like, summed yeah. up in a nice, beautiful spreadsheet. Absolutely. Get everything you want. So, yeah. So, great job. 
Really proud of you. That's really good. I think it's awesome. MVP. Good MVP. job. MVP. Good job. Absolutely. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yep. Circle the planet rally and have a prize. There you go. All right. We'll get past that with Tyler. Whenever he finds time to actually come on the show, Mr. Witkin. Here we go. With so with the stuff. derelict ships, this always yeah. explained. We want to take the stuff that already it's exists. Awesome. In the game Freaking amazing, the dude. The ships that once the ship suffers catastrophic damage, it breaks apart. Um, how can we reuse these assets and and kind of look at those arcs? Yeah, looks so good. We saw in yeah. Gamescom was right I can't wait to just like find these things like just like um, out there in space. It's gonna be great, man. Yeah. With it. Meet popsicles. Yeah, meet popsicles. We've always. I see it looking this good on my monitor. I'm gonna be amazed. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> the end of the year, the the work that we're doing does fit into. No that. game's ever been anywhere near uh, that. Again, it's really Not even kind close. Of about kind of it's creating crazy. these 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 options for design to have. So, uh, if you come across uh, a derelict ship, and in, in you know, space, right there, the cutlass the blew my mind too. I was just like, and a cutlass is uh, like how simple they could do even a smaller the, base yeah, ship. We, we want to. You know, as a derelict um, the, and just put the out there and make it look really is, awesome, is, really interesting. Say it's easier. Yeah. Um, because the, the mm -hmm. there you go, you can grab your one box. It's, it's a cutlass in its natural like state, right, right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about the it's like uh, the current cutlass bug with the pirates, how they just fly off and explode. Uh, it's like they just know where I'm in a cutlass, I might as well just commit suicide. Just give it up now. <laughs> give it up now. Look at this, man. Look at this. And everybody's wondering, can you get can can I take my gray cat out of the hangar? Yes, you can. We've got kind of challenges how we. Oh, that looks so awesome. Them. That's freaking beautiful, uh, man. I'm I'm wondering, uh, you know, while, while they said these scenes were just he made them just to kind of like, you know, show off possibilities. It also seems like there was there was more reason to these scenes than just show off possibilities. Like maybe they're they're part of mission sets or cut scenes or some some kind of situation like that. You know, they, they seem pretty planned out for more than just artwork. Well, and mm -hmm. I want to say a couple things about this, too. Again, we said at the beginning of the show, but this gentleman literally made this with the, you know, not the assets, but the scene in the actual game engine environment. This is actually rendered in the environment. You could walk around it and stuff, yep. he said, in one day. Yeah. One day. Just let that sink in that he made this scene in one day. That's pretty fucking amazing to me. Um, but the high level one person in one day, one, in, yeah, in, one by day, the end of the year. Uh, and then they got lots of people making these this type of stuff for a lot of days. So, what they've done, be a lot of good stuff. What they did on their pallets is they made all these assets, the destructible assets, where they could just tweak and do sliders for damage on things and, and different things to kind of uh compose the, op the object down. And it's just it's just sexy. I mean, look at that. And he said, yeah, with the, it has sliders for the environment on the planet. So this is on one of the planets. And somebody asked in RTV, is this the same planet that we saw before? No, totally different planet that they have in the game. So, I mean, yeah. they've already confirmed, like, all these different planets that they already have been testing and putting in and stuff. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It just blows my mind. It's just, I can't wait for it. It's insanity. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I can remember when they for, first started adding weathers in procedural planets, and that was... God, I want to say it was January, February, where they announced they just started testing weather effects and wind and, and stuff like that. And we, this is the first time we've actually seen any of it, even if it's just a, a dust cloud, you know, blowing uh, some some sand. This is the first time we've seen weather effects mm -hmm. that I can yeah. think of. So it's and these, you know, this is the stuff that they're supposedly going to be showing off in 2.0. I'm sure Stoutman has some insider information on that, judging by the look on his face right now. <laughs> yeah, everybody's playing Stoutman. On it's like NBA. I, I'm, uh, <laughs> on, on procedural planets 2.0 or whatever they're calling the the iteration they're showing off at Citizen Gone. Yeah, they just it just randomly generates a planet. It's <laughs> that's yeah. all there is to it. It's pretty Nothing simple. Nothing special. Yeah. yeah, every every game's doing that these days. I think. <laughs> yeah. With yeah. with with giant uh, goofy looking T Rexes with uh, horse hooves walking around. Sometimes it's a duck bill, you know, <laughs> or or a platypus tail or something, you know. Yeah, and here's uh, here's some of the cliff notes that we go off uh, for around the verse and everything else. I always use INN. If you guys haven't used INN or the Imperial ne News Network site, uh, the one resource that I use for breaking down all the information in these videos, if you don't have time to watch it all or you miss something, they're pretty good about it. They miss stuff sometimes, but they're pretty good about it, and you can get just the highlights. The too long, didn't read little things, and just bust through them and see what all's there. And this is one thing I'd, I'd like to highlight again. 
that they're they're really touting that they want to do. And salvage and pirates will have longer. Well, well, of course, I'm what? too big. Can't see it on the screen now. But uh, we'll have to manually carry cargo so they have lengthier gameplay. So that's going to be one of the things that they are requiring salvagers and pirates to do so they have longer gameplay. I was like, that's hmm. just an interesting thing, you know? I was like, yeah, I could do without that. But then again, I'm not a pirate of that. That doesn't mean I couldn't be a looter if somebody left some shit out in a derelict ship. You know, I might want to take some. Somebody's going to hire you. You're part of a mercenary corp. You can that's do true. anything you want. Yeah. Well, just flying up that's to a piece of salvage and, <laughs> and hitting a couple keys or clicking the mouse a couple times. And then you're done and flying away, and it takes a minute. That's pretty boring. So yeah. you got to get out, get out, go over, hunt it down, push it back. I, I can live with that. I, yeah, I guess. I mean, it just depends. We'll have to feel it, right? I mean, we won't know until it's in game, and we can test it, and then we can cry about it, I guess, at that point. We'll see. You think maybe we'll we could see. just push around one of those giant... Uh, what if it's like Big Benny style? Remember all that yeah. you guys, everybody who did it, you guys, you know, you yeah. practice pushing your Big Benny's box. That's what I you're gonna have do to it. do in game. <laughs> you didn't bully me. No, <laughs> no I, I watched everybody else do it. I was really? like, that is boring as shit. <laughs> I am not doing that. I, 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 I try to do it all the time. I try I, to big, push big, Frank. Big Benny doesn't like me anymore. It, it disappears. I gave up yeah. on it. The first I, I time I ever tried big to do it was only a couple I months ago, and I just started to push one out of the the shipping area, and I was just like, I didn't care anymore. It's like I lost lost interest by the time I got it outside the building. I was like, yeah, yeah. that's good. If it's in my way, I shoot it to get it out of my way. That's yeah. pretty much my experience. <laughs> it's cool what people out. did with it, though. I thought it was pretty cool to see other people's videos, but I just didn't have the patience for it. I was like, I just the first time I watched it uh, happen, it was Skyhawk, and you know the the story is is like recirculated. Even Lando's mentioned it, but uh, yeah. Skyhawk spent an hour and a half uh, like through crashes and stuff, finally getting his ship into position and pushing Big Benny's all the way out to his ship. And just as he gets to his ship, I think it was Admiral Nolan hops in and flies off. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, that was and, good. And that that was like I'm watching that going. I and and he was so like you could see the redness like flood yeah. into his face, and uh, he's and well there goes my ship and it was just this dead like that that monotone voice of if I find you I will kill you. Yeah. And I was just watching <laughs> that going, man, that's exactly why I'm not doing this because it's just I could see myself doing two hours setting it up only to have it all go to crap. Or like uh, I watched Astro. <laughs> that Bump, happened right? all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Astro Pup made it all the way back, and he landed and got Benny's out, and the server crashed. Oh, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. right, uh, you know, Val it's, wants to know, he's asking, and we're not quite at the Q&A yet, but I'll go ahead and throw it there. Val wants to know if Stoutman has any inside information on the Polaris, because he's super hype about it. <laughs> he's like, any hey, inside information? I'm like, Stoutman will just shake On the Polaris? Somewhere. Yeah. No. No. I, it's, I heard it's $6,000. There you go. <laughs> There's, your There's your insider information. I heard, somebody, somebody, I heard that on somebody. Yeah, needs that today, money. So, yeah, they're they're just gonna do like they're just gonna sell one more ship and then done. They're done. You know, that's it. Yeah. Everybody wants one, so they know they're gonna get it from everybody. There you go. <laughs> yeah, guys. Also, uh, I'm gonna put a link uh, inside chat here, and this is where we're gonna get most of our questions from. We're getting ready to go into the Q and A phase of our show today. It's a little bit shorter show. Um, but definitely you can use that link there and ask questions inside our discord there. It will help us organize them and find them better, um, to do that. Also, before we go any further, uh, we are going to have our traditional, uh, we're going to do our $10 gift card for the show, uh, right now and, uh, get that raffle started while we get ready to go through the Q and a session, which we're, we're doing pretty well on time. Uh, so you guys are all good on time, right? Sure. 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 Yeah, I'm I'm sleeping. That's why I got the glasses on. Okay, I'm, just, I'm probably just catching up on back. sleep. We'll from yeah, I think that's a good idea, Eric. Okay, there you yeah. go. I just want to know. I'll be like, and hey, Eric, what do you think about this? Yeah. So whenever, you whenever you whenever you see Grandpa with his sunglasses on, this is why we do it because we're old and we're tired all the time, and we just want to sleep without people bothering us. There you go. Absolutely. Sometimes you just don't want to listen to other people. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do again? We're gonna do a ten dollar gift card and we're going to do it for the bros there and here's the kicker guys you're going to have to make sure you follow all the streams if you check and nobody uh, one of the streamers in this cast does not have you on their follow list you will not be qualified to win the $10 gift card 
And I've so. got the search button up and ready to go. I will find go. out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and start that now. The keyword is bros, explanation mark bros. And uh, we'll start that timer right now. We set it an can hour. I, can I, if it gets light, then we'll close it earlier. But there you go. Go ahead, Eric. Can I bring, can I bring up oh. something? And, I, and I don't, again, I don't, I don't want to throw Toy Grubbin under the, the bus, but last week when Toy Grubbin, it was a good thing that Sophie made Toy give, uh, give back that prize he won because he was not following me on my channel, Ooh. which would have disqualified him. Ooh. So I'm just saying, I'm just, just saying. saying. Toy, just Sophie saying. did the right thing last week <laughs> by making Toy Grubbin. Uh, roll that, roll Are that you back sure he around. Didn't just go through and unfollow all of us afterwards. Probably. Out of spite. Like, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Could have happened. I'm just, happen. I'm just here for a ten dollar gift card. I there don't want go. to really follow you. So guys, we're going to be content's this. worth it. We're going to be doing this. Make sure you're following everybody. If you need the link again, it's explanation mark space bros. We'll give you a link for everybody here, um, outside me because you're already here and hopefully you are following. Um, and then after the show, we'll be going back, and I'll be doing my regular stream on top of this, and then we'll hopefully get those last couple subs and unlock that saber, baby. I want to give a saber so bad, oh, yeah. so bad. You know, toy, just just ignore him. All right, guys, get the questions in there. If you have I'm any sorry, questions toy. for the cast about anything you've seen so far, anything you want to talk about related to Star Citizen, or if you're new and you have questions or anything, throw them in there. Uh, we'll knock Darn. some of them out that we can either in that link or if you can't put it in the link because you don't want to download Discord or go ahead and put it in brackets question. We'll try to get to it. You might have to re-ask if we miss it because unlike uh, Disco, I will not go through solo mode and ignore 50% of all your questions. Love you, Disco. And uh, we'll try to get to everyone we can. So that's what that's what the plan see, is. See, you, you talk smack about Disco and Stoutman leaves. That's I know he's mad at me now. He's like, I'm calling Disco right now. Yeah, he's on the phone. Dude, with him. You get on this stream. You don't even know what he's doing, bro. He's talking smack <laughs> on you. It's crazy. I think Disco's still on his like whirlwind <laughs> European tour. Whirlwind I don't think he cares tour of <laughs> Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Rand Bodhi says, "Why doesn't Matachi have sunglasses on?" Well, I told you, I'm going to start a personal raffle. I honestly do not own any sunglasses because I have to wear a prescription to see. And so I have to have prescription sunglasses. I don't own any. The last ones I had were destroyed by my four-year-old son. So I just squint a lot and hope for the best, especially in the winter snow. It's really bad. It's terrible. Matter of fact, it's a plague upon my soul and being, so please throw money immediately for the donations <laughs> for sunglasses for Mitachi. I appreciate it. <sighs> Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> So we have, uh, let's see, we got one question here from Headclaw. It says, does the dragonfly remind anyone of the speeder chases on Endor for, from Return of the Jedi? No. No. Not at all. Nothing. I don't know the movie he's referencing. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's that one with uh, with William Shatner in it, right? I think it's got. I think it's a pot reference because he said Endor, and I think he meant Endo. So I think oh, there's gotcha, something gotcha. I don't know. It's one of those hippie movies. Indica is like Indica Couch. There yeah. you go. Well, Shatner did some weird stuff in the '70s, a bunch That's of right. B movies. So 70s, maybe that is I what he's talking about. Oh, those those movies got out. Bur got purged from the Star Citizen lore, so we can't we can't speak about those anymore. Oh, there we go. It's a Disney movie, right? Absolutely. Um, it it, it is now. I think. <laughs> Probably is now. No, you know what? I think Rand's right. That's the one with Bruce Willis and. Uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jackie Chan. Mr. And, T. Uh, yeah. Mr. T, yeah. Yeah, I've seen him in there. It was crazy. Cra crazy mashup. One of those mashup movies. Just didn't quite make it. I think it only grows to <laughs> like $22,000. Uh, let's see. Waterby has a question. He said, uh, what would make sense to have the speed auto cargo loading be linked to the quality of the hangar your ship is using? So would it make sense to, to have that speed or the time dilation or whatever Ooh. you want to call it? be referenced on the quality of the hangar you have. So if you have a shitty hangar, maybe it takes you longer to load shit. Maybe you drop that's, the eggs. That's true. Rich people who have a nice hangar don't want to have their time wasted with cargo. That's so kind that of genius. Sense. Yeah. You, 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 you pay genius. for the convenience. Yeah. Wadabi, well, put that up on... Uh, oh, crap, on guys. We didn't do it in time. Zim's arrived. Well, here oh. comes all the questions. <laughs> Somebody has to ask the questions. It's good. Go ahead and ask the lighting question because we know he's it's already coming. exceeded his monthly quota. He doesn't get any questions. Tonight. No, that is that is a good question. I don't know about the quality of the hanger because it's not necessarily going to be your hanger. 
but just the amount of money you put into it in general, that right. would make sense. What and also, if the you quality could purchase of the an add on for it. That would be cool, like some sort of uh, loader or uh, crew, like an NPC crew for your hangar that would help, yeah. would auto load it and make it faster. Well, that would be cool. Like, Iran just said the same thing I, I was saying. It, I think the quality of the port would be more important. Like, if you're in Cathcart, you know, at Spider Station, mm -hmm. which is just a, a conglomeration of a bunch of derelict ships and stuff that turn into a space station, you're probably not going to have the best loading crew, ground crew, to load your ship up. Whereas if you're on Terra at one of the high-end uh, ports, you know, it, it might be faster, but it's all probably going to cost you more there. Absolutely. So th that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that does make sense with Tabi, just as a general concept. Mm -hmm. I, I hope they do yeah. something like that. That would be really cool. All right, um, and I think it'd make – I would like these little type of add-ons to be money sinks in the game that you could even buy outside the game and stuff, some DLC right. stuff, because I'd, I'm totally willing to help finance the game and do other things, optional subscriptions, all these things that just might make more convenience for you. Um, or like so. uh, like you buy yourself, a, like you said, an add-on that is a – it's the, yeah. I don't know, the, the space caterpillar – or the space forklift, and that I gives mean, you a faster load time. they're going to do that with skins time. and other things, other yeah. cosmetic items, and this would just be a minor convenience item. It's not game-breaking by any means. So I support that yeah, all the time. I help finance games, obviously. Yeah, it, yeah I, I am 100%. I've said this many times, and I'll say it again. I'm 100% for microtransactions that are cosmetic or slight yes. adjustments that do not like really affect the overall gameplay. Yeah. And I, I will be, if, if we have them, I will be buying them if, you know, because I want this game to go on pretty much so my grandkids can play it. Yeah. I also want to have more giveaways after the game launches. It'd be great giveaways that's for that's skins, good. DLC, other things that you could do yep. and give that's them true. that. You Especially since they're going to stop selling ships, I wouldn't mind giving cosmetic items away. It'd be really neat. All right, so John Wayne asked, by the way, great stream in the morning, John. I love watching him. He's, does a, he's been doing a morning stream. He's been getting some traction there, too. So if you guys haven't checked him out, please check him out. He's a, he's a handsome well, gentleman. Bald I think, head, I think beard. Was, I think if it's still California, John's it's John's birthday. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Is it your birthday? Happy birthday, today, John? John Wayne. I think we'll it's, it's twelve forty-five now here, but happy what? birthday! Well, it's birthday. either happy birthday or happy belated birthday. So either way, mm -hmm. you know, there you go for sure. That's awesome. Happy birthday, John Wayne. <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude. All right, so he, his question is: uh, Do you think the the market where you can buy and sell goods for cargo in three is the first introduction of the economy being in the game, or do you think the prices will be hard fixed? Isn't that what they said? I the, think yes and yes. The... It will be the first iteration, and I think they will be hard fixed as they test yeah. things. I don't think you're going to have... Until we have AI, there's no counter for the influencing factor on the economy, right? Because they said the way they're going to counter the influencing factor of, of supply and demand as we go into more advanced stages of the economy is generating missions for AI. So if something's being starved out, the AI is going to help fund it if people don't pick up and do it. So that way you can't right. stranglehold an economy. So I don't think they're going to have that sliding scale yet until they can master doing that either in a physical, actual aspect of the game or even on the back end, just like shit appears or whatever they're going to do. But they want to have those balancing aspects in there before they're going to allow any sliding scale or non-fixed items, I would think. I don't see how else they could do it right now. They're, they're going to have to keep uh, be adjusting that constantly as they yeah. as people find loopholes and ways to exploit it, which yeah. is going to go on forever. Yeah, all time so. for the life of the game. I mean, that's just how it's going yeah. to have to be. So that's why many groups like Eve have economists that they hire just purely for that fact on there. It's not going to be as severe here because the people don't fully influence it. And I still don't know what the economist does over in Eve because if it's player driven, I mean, what's he do? Like, oh, shit, look what they're doing. Because he doesn't make it. Yeah. What are they doing? Look at that. Well, shit, I can't. Economists, economists charge a bunch of money and have a degree to take guesses. And yeah. that's and, and, that, and pe some people are. We'll give them money for that for some reason. That's that's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like I don't want to I mean, go to the start market. Give me a degree, and I'll just tell you what I think may happen. But I'm not going to put <laughs> stock in it. <laughs> exactly. Some people really enjoy playing the auction house in games, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to knock that aspect of gaming. Nope. And I think for them, that's probably like a lot of fun. I am super excited. They are going to kind of like curtail that. Uh, I'm as yeah. a guy who, if you're just like the lame and you're like the regular schmo, a lot of times you get screwed over by that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, 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 it's, well, it's great stuff. for them, and, it, and, it's, and it, it is interesting gameplay. Uh, auction houses tend to be really weird, so be be good if they kind of like you know. They cause a massive inflation a lot of the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually, usually, 
And games like EVE where you can buy your game time in it, right, through the actual making money in the game and all that stuff, It's very it gets very convoluted. It gives you a driving force that causes RMT in your game, regardless if you want it or not, because people are either paying a subscription or they're buying that Plex and stuff for EVE inside the game. And since we don't have a sub here, that eliminates a huge chunk of that to drive it, right? I mean... There's not a whole lot of things that are, once the game launches, that are going to be worth money outside of the game, except for the ships like we already deal with on eBay and stuff, black market stuff. And uh, I, I just think it's, I think they're on a good path. I don't think they have all the answers, and they're never going to. No game does. And as long as they adapt and continue through the life of the game, I think they'll be okay. Well, as long as we're able to give an, one item to another player, you're going to be sell, people are going to be selling it on eBay. So ships are still going to be on eBay. Yeah, absolutely. They always will. I mean, as long as you can trade between players, they're going to do that, right? Mm, yeah. So, now, whether they actually follow through or they scam the shit out of you for real cash, that's a whole different aspect, you know, but that's, uh, that's one of those things. But, yeah, I think, I think the answer to the question for John is, yes, it's going to be the true introduction to the economy, and, you know, they're going to be hard fixed prices, I think, to begin with, and then they'll adjust them over time as we, they start to evolve it. Okay, next question is from uh, iKerbals. He says, "Do you guys think you need to need a starter ship? I have a Carrick Endeavor Starfarer. Should I melt one of those for some smaller ships?" No, no, no. You you do need a starter ship, but rather than melt one, what you need to do is you need to open up your RSI page and click on that Endeavor and there's a little like uh, package icon there. Click on that and the name you want to type in is Eric McKetton. <laughs> And the email address, <laughs> yeah, there you and go. then you go ahead and click <laughs> gift now, and that'll get rid of that one, so you won't even have to worry about that one. I'll yeah. take care of it for you, I promise. Mm. And then go ahead and get yourself an Aurora. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Genius. No problem. Brilliant. Matter of fact, if you give him a big enough one, he might just give you an Aurora. You never know. You know what? Yeah. I'll, get, I, I'll, 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 raise, I'll raise that offer. I'll buy you the Aurora if you give me the Endeavor. Don't forget Eric. He's, he's trying yeah. to scam you. Scammers. Thanks, Tal, for saving me from that scammer. <laughs> oh, uh, well, seriously, though, I do think everybody should have a starter ship or a small ship. Uh, uh, personally, uh, just just from my perspective of how you want to play the game, I think you're going to want to have that option. You know, because if you have nothing but these big capital ships that require crews and all that, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of cutting out a lot of gameplay for yourself. Well, and, and it might be easier to, to earn money early on with a starter ship as opposed mm -hmm. to those big ships. We don't know what kind of missions you're going to be able to take, and because it's not just... There's several things to consider. If you're going to do trade missions, you're probably going to have to have some capital to buy cargo. If you want, don't want to do the mission, you just want to, mm. you know, do a trade. Yeah. And secondly, uh, you, if the reputation system works anything similar to some of the other games I played, they're not going to give you a freighter full of cargo to start with. You're going to have to work your way up through yeah. and, through agents to be trusted with such a load and that kind of capital. So you're probably going to be like, here's one SEU, and I don't see you spend the money and fuel on a star fare and be like, move the box the guy's carrying. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you might want to have something scalable <laughs> to do that. one box. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> although, al although, like, you know, I was having a discussion with the guy today. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, my first day when Star Citizen's released, and God forbid, if I ever do get my Bonnie Merchantman, it will be the first ship I fly. Mythical I mean, Banu Merchantman. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. There was like a little bit of like glimpse of hope today. Um, but you know, like I mean, you probably can start off with like a Starfare or a Carrick. I mean, Carrick's all about exploration, and I mean, I don't know. I'm should, definitely going to want to start off using one of those ships pretty quick, though. To be honest, you know, depending on how it's set up, even if you get exploded, even if it's player to player trades, even if you borrow from a friend. I mean, who who's going to cry about you borrowing their Aurora? I mean, really. Mm -hmm. I, 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 if you have any friends at all, I would think you do that. And if you uh, don't, you can ask me. Sure, yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd loan you my we, Aurora. You know what I mean? No, There's going to be something. Test Squadron, we'd be crying about it. Like, no, you can't have our Aurora. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> not only do you can you not do level one missions. Um, sorry, sir. You can't be in test because you do not own an Aurora. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's that's. <laughs> You know what? Oddly yeah, enough, that problems. isn't a rule. I don't we were want to discuss that the I'm other day. Like, wait a minute. Moderator now. No, it's it's not a rule, but most people think it is. Yeah, we we need to fix that though. I think that should be a requirement. We're not going to be able to blot out the sun unless we have enough auroras. It's true. And, and I have some extra auroras. Don't worry. Yeah, well, you they, have they, did, they did the they did the calculation. If you were standing on Earth, looking at uh, our sun at like its its apex and the sunniest day of the year, it would require fifty thousand auroras in the sky exactly in between to blot out the sun. So right now we need five auroras per testy to uh, meet our goal of blotting out the sun. There you go. So. Mm -hmm. We need you to know, when there's a total eclipse, it only takes one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 
<laughs> so it depends how close you are to the aurora, right? One aurora could completely occlude the sun if you're close enough. Yeah, to the aurora, yeah, right? aurora is like right here crashing into your forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's all about it's like, <laughs> That's oh, how we do it. Glitch. That's how we do it. We <laughs> yeah. crash our ships into you. There you go. Out Absolutely. The sun. All right, Blood Dragon uh, has a question here. It's simple. He says uh, M50 or 350R? 350R. It, for racing? Is that the question? Doesn't have a question curtail. He just says one or the other. Which one? Choose. Sh- I'm going I'm to throw his name out there. Everybody here, you guys know Shive? He's not on the boards right now because he likes to stay hidden until he's number one. Uh, top racer in the game, likes flying in a 350R. Uh, just to talk a little bit about it, it has a uh, cruise speed of 1060. I was flying it today. Uh, you can uh, mount a size 3 gun on the front, size 2 is on the wings. Uh, missile racks on the back. It is a hell of a dogfighter. Uh, one of the best racers in the game. 350R um, all the way. When I, I, I rented one last week and I did not have item ports for the missile racks. Uh, so Ooh, I don't know really? if that's a bug or hmm. if it's uh, they've removed that from it. But uh, it. as of this last week, I could not put the talons on there. I, I specifically rented the proper uh, missile racks for it too. So I don't know what's going on there. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, well, I would say actually, toys. I would say a three fifty R for fighting as well. I think right now the the M fifty is uh, it's kind of weak in the fighting department. It's really it's gotten easy to kill again. You know, every time I see them, you know, it's just brrrp, and they pop, and I move on to something else. Yeah, Stoutman. M fifties are smaller, but a three fifty R. I would prefer that one myself. See, I go M fifty, and just because. I just run into stations with them, jump out and grab my FPS weapons. But I think it looks cool. I like the M50. So it is it, a super sexy ship. It is a sexy ship, and I I like it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it depends if if you're using it in context of a certain situation, or if you're just saying one versus the other. I'd go M50 just for one versus the other, just for contextually. I think it looks cool. But everybody has different opinions, so that's the way it goes. Uh, let's see. Next question is from Zim. Zim says, "Is there a desert planet in the Stanton system?" Because we saw sand and desert on ATV. That's a good question. I don't think so. I remember they were telling us about the four different planets in Stanton a while ago, and I don't think one was a desert one. Hmm. Now, it could be an area of, of a planet always, because, I mean, it could be as far as you see. Mm-hmm. Or it could that, be a moon. That's true. I mean, moons look different, too. Just because we assume it's a planet, it could be a planetoid or a moon. Um, because I think it just had like a like white sand and stuff, so you don't know. Yeah, but I think it has an atmosphere, so I think it's a planet, at least We're in the stand system. Well, you know, Delamar is a moon base. Well, it's not even a moon; it's it's a uh, dwarf planet, and uh, and uh, it's got an atmosphere too. So it could, you know, they're they're filling putting stuff in the stand system that doesn't necessarily belong there just to test it out. Right. And that's that's why we we're getting Levski there and whatnot. So it's interesting. That's true. It's interesting. All right, next question from Zem is, uh, I know it's for testing mostly, but the Comarays, in my opinion, are very close together. Do you think that's, do you think they will cover a larger area in the full game? Uh, I think it's an overkill if they end up adding thousands per system, not to mention the craziness of having to visit them all. Um, I don't know. What do you? Uh, I'll... Comarays are all on one planet right now. Yeah. Uh, and and for a comaray, there's a lot of them versus a, a satellite where you would think there'd be a, sa- a lot of satellites just for the planet to be used. But comaray would be for interplanetary communication. So yeah, I think there's too many for a comaray to be around them. But it's just for gameplay right now. Yeah, yeah right now I think they're implemented just so we didn't stack up on two comarays for the entire thing. Right. But I think they will spread them out. I think you'll have areas. But always remember this: if you spread out comarays. That means those single comrades will affect a larger area, right? Because it's yeah. not going to be the immediate vicinity. There, if you want to do dirt in an area, they're going to shut down that comrade. You're not going to get the police backing you up or whatever else. And I would think they'd do something closer to some of the uh, in between stations, probably you know all sorts of stuff like that. Because if you have a border zone area, I would think it'd be littered with comrades every area where there could be gameplay. So that way it could be go. Good, bo- good guy versus bad guy type stuff. And I think that would be really interesting. But yeah, I think they'll spread them out, for sure. That, well, that's a really great point. I mean, just, I mean, why should every planet should have that many comrades? Just to, like, keep crime down and stuff like that. Uh, this is just, like, in our sector of space, yeah. all those comrades are just for Crusader. Crusader is a giant. 
gas giant. Yeah. Um, so why not? I'm all for it. And it's it's moons. It's it has space stations that are yeah. around it. You need to keep law and order. Uh, every planet should have that many or something. Maybe not every planet, but yeah. I think know, it just makes sense that. wherever they have gameplay at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Wherever there's gameplay, I mean, because just having a random comma ray over here doesn't mean it's going to impact me if I'm just flying by the planet. But if it's near objects and stuff, I would like to see it localized. Like certain space stations have comma rays where you can shut them on or off. So that way, like, say our pirate base now, it could be on or off on the comma ray. You're getting, you're getting penalties if you're doing bad shit out there when it's off or when it's on. Or, and if you're not getting any penalties when it's turned off instead. So I think that's really something that I think I'd like to see in the game keep going like that. So. They just need to put auto cannons on now, and that'd make it really interesting. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Any other questions? If we don't have any other questions, we'll. Uh... Looks like we got one more coming in. Okay. Yeah. Slow typing. Zim's going. He's frantically <laughs> typing. Guys, you're, you're welcome to add more questions in there. Yeah, uh, ask those questions. Ask anything you want. It's all good. What's with the sunnies, and why is Mitt left out? We are, we're, well, you're late to the show on that one because he hates lighting. Yeah, They're forcing watch me the because, because I bitch about lighting so much, I am now forced to be shackled to the <laughs> lighting. So I, I have to always stare into the light moving forward from this yeah, moment on. Zim, if you just tune in on time, you'd know the answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> Minus 500 bro bucks for him. Come on. Yeah, just <laughs> delete. <laughs> That's what he used to do. Every time you, he's late, delete some bro bucks from him, Itachi. He does provide us a lot of questions, though. So maybe we'll give him 100 bro bucks for every question he asks and take him off every time he's late. So oh, don't encourage him. <laughs> that'd be, like that'd be good. If they're troll questions, we'll subtract 400 bro bucks. You know, so you know I, I can speak from experience from, from, from a test squadron. Discord gets kind of pissy when you crash their servers. Just oh. giving you a heads up. You there give you them go. that kind of incentive, and you're going to end up crashing the Discord oh, server. Wow. Anyone know where they want to start the game? What system and the planet? Oh, that's an interesting question. I don't know. I really don't know. To be honest, I haven't followed enough of the lore yet. Because, un- intentionally, because I want the game to be closer. And I know, I like, Zealous and other guys, they're a Bible of information about the lore and all the planets. I really want to naturally kind of evolve into the lore and stuff and then read more. I know the military history, the Escalation UE, all that stuff, mm-hmm. and I just don't want to spoil myself. I kind of want to, even worlds that are inhabited already, I kind of want to discover those worlds as I venture throughout the game and be like, oh, and this is the backstory of it. I don't want to be like, oh, I already know all about this and blah, 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 blah. I just kind of want to naturally do that, so that's me. I want to start at Terra and kind of explore that a little bit and then leave because I won't be back for a long time. So I, th- I think that'd be a fun cool. way to start the game off. Right. Yeah, I uh, I don't really know a lot about what uh, I don't know the lore, the lore as much as I uh, as much as I should. Uh, so kind of like what you said, Mitt. Like I'm uh, I'm waiting to see uh, yeah. what they give us, and you know I'm, I'm gonna enjoy the game. Yeah, exactly. Regardless, oh, like I'm, wherever I go. Absolutely. Well, I'm ro- so my go ahead. my wife just found this uh, meowing at our front door. No joke. His little, uh, it's a kitten. And he's all shaking and purring and loving. Apparently, we've been adopted again. There you go. <laughs> Live rescue right here on the Space Bro Show. You see. We it. don't need more cats. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were just talking about what planet uh, each streamer might want to start out with or, you know, from their spawn point or how they'd want to adventure and play the game um, at launch, what you were thinking. I did Eric, how did you get that cat out of his EVA suit so fast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, know I don't, I don't I, understand that. I, I want to learn more lore about the planets before I decide which one I start yeah. out at, you know? Absolutely. Cool, cool. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm getting kitty massages. It's starting to hurt. All right, wow. <laughs> time to go. <laughs> it's like kitty massage, blood running down the side of his arm. Uh, so Zim says, don't tell Xylor Disco, but you can still buy the Carrick CCUs at the moment, Kappa. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you said it, made me read that live on the stream as a question format. I think everybody knows. I think that's until the the sixth. All those, um, all those. Yeah, there's the, the, there's one combo that's still available right now. I think. Yeah, because it's still yeah. The, earlier the today. The terrapin's still available and stuff too. The four ninety five combo is still available. I think. Uh, Kerbals wants to know: Would you hire an NPC alien? Yes. If I say it every week. Cute, if she was cute, I would. Oh, Banu. 
That's why I was going to say. My Bonnie Whaley and my Bonnie Merchant. I would. Let's go with the Shatner logic. <laughs> but yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. I hope they have lots of different kind of like. Uh, I want like a Vandal. I want to. I want to kill Rathi, who's going to end up, turn, you know, turning his back on us and. You yeah, know, a, crew, a crew full of aliens would be fun. I'm sorry, not kill Rathi. Cool. That's another. That's another game. <laughs> Just import him. It's okay. Cross him over. <laughs> Eric, would you hire an NPC alien for your crew? Sure, why not? And uh, that would be exactly uh, how the hiring process would go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've you know I, I I've already said before that uh, I will you know let Sophie crew for me. So I suppose. Oh. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to creep up and like throw something at us or something. All right, let's see. What kind of bonuses do you want from being a citizen? Um, and also from finishing your service in Squadron 42. So what, you know, that's been pretty hypothetical. They like said maybe rep bonus and stuff. If you could choose, what kind of bonus would you like to see from completing the game and becoming a citizen? Um, Free well, more too. Access to certain things that, that non-citizens can't get, like maybe some certain ships and services within the within the planetary systems yeah. that, that was kind of implied that, that like at least within the uee you would need special licenses or it'd be easier to get things with certain licenses and you could only yeah. get those licenses if you were a citizen Perhaps but then you could jobs also, you're probably only going to be able to get through military too yeah. but mind you that's not the only way to become a citizen they said that's true uh, serving in the military right. was not the only way i'm sure there's like you could buy your way in or Take well, a they're going to have to offer stuffing for people that don't want to play Squadron 42. Yeah. There's going to be some other methodology, I'm sure. Maybe a mission chain or something. I don't know. Who knows? But, yeah, um, I think I think they base the game off of more than just Starship Troopers. I think it's off of my, at least one other movie, there, I think. Yeah, and, and we do know that, yes, citizenship will allow us to vote, whereas non-citizens will not be able to vote, and that votes will impact the game universe somehow. Absolutely. And uh, so right. there's that. Yeah, I'd like to see some sort of, uh, you know, discounts or with the rep, right? Maybe tie into your rep, like they said. And if you get finished, depending which path you go or, you know, some sort of option to complete it, maybe you get some starting rep with some sort of agent so you can spill your character right over into missions on side the game. And maybe instead of starting at a level one class agent, maybe you get a couple other contacts to like do it. If you do a nefarious ending or something like that, maybe you get some pirate contacts that if you do a good ending, maybe you get some uh, former military contacts and stuff. I think that'd be really cool. And then of course I want it free addresses for everybody. I mean, that's, that's the way I feel. Everybody <laughs> has to just get a free address for completing squadron 42 and it'd just be done. It'd be like that. Yeah. You only need 10 of them to block out the sun. Then. No doubt. And that's all, and that's if you stay far away from them too. Um, yeah, uh, Kerbals wants to know a question: How bad will you be in game? Kill other players, take NPC slaves, wipe out alien critters, take space drugs. Uh, what happens if I have a disease? Sell space drugs. What happens if I'm trying to help other people? Make drugs. What happens if I'm holistic? You know? <laughs> So, sir, who wants to answer that first? Who wants to go with that? I one? want to answer that. Go, man. Check, 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 check. I want. I want to do all those things. Yeah. Uh, but also, like sometimes I'm gonna to want to be a good guy. Yeah. So I think I want. I want. I want the options to kind of do all that stuff. He wants to be the bad guy who meets the one person and has an incident and it turns his life around and he's former bad exactly. guy. Exactly. Like yeah. the, ro the rogue. The rogue with the heart of gold. That's right. <laughs> the rogue. That's great. Now, now, for me, I, I want to play mostly a good guy. You want to be mostly just, a good guy? Yeah, I don't believe you at all. Uh, seriously, I do. <laughs> you really do? You'd be like the good pirate yeah. Roberts or something? And, no, people think I'm going to be engaged in all this PvP because I do it all the time. I won't be. PvP is not really my driving factor. Yeah. Uh, neither is ship-to-ship co -ship combat. I mean, I'm, I'm fairly good at it, but that's not why I want to play this game. There's so much other stuff I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stout, how about you? Um, I'm going to be leaning towards the good side i'm not going to be bad too yeah. often but i'll try a little bit of this a little bit of that i'll try a little bit of everything eventually yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in the gray area as everybody knows i'm just gonna kind of be right down the middle yeah if i don't want to take a reputation ding i'll hire you so yeah that's and, that, and that's the thing it's like 
that's why I'm so interested in rep because I like staying, you know, like uh, almost like a chaotic neutral type aspect. And if you go too far one way or the other, it eliminates your clientele and, and what you can do in the game. And I, I want to keep all avenues as open as I can so I can experience the game from every aspect. I, I do want to mine. I mean, as much combat as I experienced in EVE, and you can look at my kill boards on there, I killed a lot of shit. I mined a shit ton in EVE. I had some of the biggest mining fleets that EVE have ever seen. And, uh, yeah, they'd always be like, is that Matachi mining? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm mining, bro. It's awesome. It's like, just chill out with the bros, crack open a beer, crank up the tunes, and drill some rock. It's awesome. So I can't wait. Ven <laughs> Venezuela Locos just said, like, I, and, and I'm probably quoted for this, where I say, uh, I will try my best not to be a bad guy. And that's kind of true. I want the option to yeah. do all the good stuff and all the bad stuff. I don't want to be a good guy. I don't want to be a bad guy. I want the options to kind of do it all. If I have to earn back rep to do the good guy stuff again, I will. But, like, I want the option to, you know, to be a CD pirate, to be yeah. a smuggler, to be, you know, Han Solo, to be, you know, the a hero. I, w I yeah. want all those options. I don't want to go down the road of you're either, you know... You're locked in, right? You're this character... I don't want like to be locked, locked into in. stuff. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully that's the thing with the uh, having multiple multiple pledges where they say, like, you know, you can be uh, Han Solo or Chewbacca, you know. I just hope the reputation system is balanced enough to where if you work hard enough, you can remain neutral and get maybe dip your toes on your side of the line. You don't have to go all in, right? I mean, if you go all in, may, that should be really hard to recover. It's like, I don't know, I woke up today and I blew up, uh, you know, three endeavors and four four hospital ships. I didn't know what I was doing. But, uh, you know, that should be a little harder to recover than, hey, you know, this guy told me to F off, so I blew his ship up. I should be able mm -hmm. to recover from that a little more easy. You know, pay a fine and say, sorry, bro. It's Watch your way ass in traffic. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but yeah, I think that's. I think it's uh, going to be a good aspect of the game, and I, I hope that they allow that. Um, selling drugs? Nah, probably won't participate in that. Seizing drugs? Sure, you know, or nefarious cargo. As long as I don't know about it, I don't. I don't have a problem with space drugs, but um, I don't know. That's not really going to be my goal. I guess you know, I'll be like, oh, you got a package? Cool. Let's take that over there. I don't need to know all the details of what's inside. Confirmed, Mitachi's after your package. All day long, baby. All day long. Yeah, just just don't tell him it's illegal and he'll do it. There you go. Yeah, pretty easy. NPC slaves, probably not. I don't need slaves. Well, they already said you can't have NPCs be slaves, didn't they? Or well, they certain... I don't know, the... the the lore, the lore talks about all slaves. for it. Yeah, yeah. There's there is slave trading. I just we don't know what to what extent we will be involved in that. Yeah, or if they will allow it at all for human race. And since you can't play alien races at this stage, kind of eliminates us from the fray, whether it's intended or not. Well, and they have to be careful because some countries that they want Star Citizen to be played in yeah, have, have really or... weird laws about uh, games and and stuff like that. You know, certain mm -hmm. violence laws as well as certain. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really see uh, them doing much with slavery. I don't yeah. see a real reason for the, it. Even though the NPCs in your crew are going to act as extensions of yourself and not really have true autonomy as as crew, they still aren't going to use the terminology of slaves. I mean, that's just something that's a slippery slope for them dealing with these other countries and other groups and stuff, and I don't think they're going to cross that bridge. But we'll see. They might. Eve did. They didn't give a shit. They're like, yeah, the Yamar had Mimitar of slaves. Now they're free people that fight to... Uh, Amar and you know they talk about all the different slavery and horrors of slavery in it and everything else and they give no shit so who knows you just don't know um of course they're from Iceland so you know space vikings up there uh, <laughs> let's see here Zim then asks he says will you make your character look like yourself or will you make yourself look look like your character different? Kappa Kappa? Make it look like Kappa. I guess. Okay. I, uh, I really hope that most people do not just keep recycling the same character over and over again. Uh, the, the whole purpose, part of the whole error system, is that you get to create a new character and you know, and live a new life. And I, I really hope people don't just keep like it's it's not Mitachi, Mitachi the second, Mitachi the third, Mitachi the fourth, Mitachi the fifth. You know, I already said I that's what people, I'm doing. <laughs> 
of the I, I, I really hope people would be a little bit more creative than that. And I'm not changing my characters. name to Frank. I'm Stoutman, no. so if I have to add a number, then that's whatnot. fine. All my, don't worry, Eric. All my spy accounts will definitely have a very names and looks to them, and they'll all look exactly like moonshiners. And then Stoutman, <laughs> and I'm going to name them Stoutman underscore AR and the moon shiny and stuff like that. So that way we could impersonate them in public and then be like, they'll do all sorts of, you know, weird stuff. It'd be awesome. And people say, oh, I saw you doing this. It's like, no, I was never was there. It me, bro. Man. Really? You weren't dry humping the lamppost? I know you were. It's like, no. but that, that to me, that's, that's just like all these, you know, the how many Luke Skywalkers do you see in just Arena Commander and, and Star Citizen right now? And we only have a small fraction of the people playing it. It's like, come on, guys. Here you have a chance to create a character in a science fiction universe, and your answer is to make your character named Jane Cobb or Malcolm Reynolds or Luke Skywalker. They're gonna you know, get they're gonna get laughed at big time. Don't Eric worry. Eric is pissing off everybody in my chat now. So Duke Skywalker. <laughs> I don't care. Duke Skywalker is gonna so hunt him down. Games. So we're gonna I've have seen Duke, that so many games. So Duke Skywalker is no longer following movie. Eric now. Commander Shepard just mm -hmm. X'd him out. Uh, well, hey, to be fair, <laughs> Commander Shepard did not take his name from uh, science fiction. I know fiction. he didn't, he did, but everybody assumes he, had no he did, idea. right? Yeah. 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 That's kind of like me with my org, right? I chose Overwatch, and then I was like, oh, wait, Blizzard has a whole fucking game <laughs> about it. I was like, god damn it. It's like, I ain't changing the name. That's the way it works. Well, at least Driz, at least Drizdo Erden has nothing to do with space <laughs> genre. You know, at least you got that going for you. Yeah. You know. Exactly. John Wayne is literally John Wayne. That is his name. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Change your name. It's too popular. Uh, Zim Juice also asks, he says, why do we need to earn citizenship? Uh, won't you just have one since you were born on Earth and you eat oh. space? Works just like uh, Rome or, uh, or even more accurately, like the Federation in uh, the movie version of Starship Troopers. Yep. So listen, there, there is a difference between being a member of the uh, a a benefactor or a, a benefitter of the government uh, and being a member of the government. A member of the government is somebody who uh, earns their citizenship, whereas a, a civilian, while still benefiting from the government, they do not do anything to earn it so they don't get all of the rewards right. of being a citizen. Citizenship through service. Would you like to know more? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, will you have two accounts, one for pirate, one for good guy, or will you just stick with one character until you die? I'm doing one. Okay. I just got one account. I have multiple pledges on my account, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to do one. I'm going to have a second account for like a, a pirate type guy that just starts off with one small ship and something to work my way up mm -hmm. and, and try it like that. I'm probably not going to play it that much, but it'll be for something different. It may be very likely that I have a second account for streaming and a primary account for gameplay, uh, just man. because just because for the whole uh, stream sniper thing. Depending on how bad it is in Star Citizen, you know, I'll give it some time, and if it looks like it's going to be a problem, it's then I'll create a specifically a streaming account. It's going to be but, terrible. I I guarantee it's going to be terrible. It's going to change. The speaking whole age of that, a lot of a stream. Go ahead. Speaking of that, have you noticed that you introduced something new with the uh, contact list? Yes. Where if a per if you don't uh, have a person added to your contact list and back and forth, mm -hmm. they don't see you on their. Uh, they can't their follow thing. you automatically. They have to hunt by server mm -hmm. by server for you, which is a pain in the ass. But uh, yeah, which is yeah. it'll awesome. be interesting yeah. to see how they do that. Yeah, I, I I appreciate that for especially now for for griefing purposes because there's no reason to track anybody down. There's no bounty hunting yet, so legitimately yeah, the only reason yeah but there's gonna down, there's gonna be there's gonna be griefing if you allow people to track somebody no matter what. 100 percent of the time, yeah. some people are going to do it just because they're dicks. You know, it's just gee, we've for already no experienced reason. that several times now. I have uh, one or two people we yep. know for a fact that chase people around and constantly, constantly search server yep. servers, been all night looking for specific people to grief, and we have yep. run into that headlong. So, um, I I agree, but I mean, I, I'm interested to see how they're going to balance that gameplay. I hopefully they do it through a contract system. So that way people serious about wanting a group to bounty hunting, they're going to have to pay for it. They can't just do it because they just want to arbitrarily like, oh, I think this guy's a dick and just do it. But people that seriously want to track and find somebody that could create a contract to another person or an org, pay a fee. And if they're a criminal that you're hunting, maybe the fee's reduced. Like it's cheaper and cheaper to hunt this guy because he's a bad guy. But if it's just a regular dude, mm -hmm. it should be very expensive. It should not be cheap to go like kill Stoutman because he's a fucking miner somewhere. 
and get a contract for that. So I, I hope they, they tier it right and they do it like that because the minute you make something a little bit challenging for a griefer that's not as convenient as him flipping on a switch and coming over and doing it, you see the griefing nosedive quickly because it's not convenient and fun for them to do. Uh, yeah, if it's not simple and easy, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. It's too much time. I'll find something else to do, somebody else to fuck with. And that's that's yeah. pretty much where it boils down to. Just don't make it easy on them, and there you go. And to expand well, on that, of, that's what we talked they have, about they earlier. They have no skill. Yeah, well, it's it's also talks about, because they don't want to fight even. This is the whole thing with that. I'm so glad they're, they're starting to step away from the PvP slider shit and all this other stuff. Because they talked about, in addition to that, trying to move griefers to their own instance. We had this whole thing when Shepard was on my stream earlier today. He's like, yeah, they're going to move in their own instance. I'm like, you really see two griefers staying in an instance together and do that? They were more likely to roll a new character or get a whole new account or do so or kill that guy off just to grief because they don't care about the character. It's about the objective of giving somebody else a pain in the ass. It's not about playing the game. So they're not right. going to go against somebody else who's a griefer, you know? So it's just not going to happen. I guarantee that. So anyway, I'm, but uh, yeah, I just I just don't see see that being a proper metric in in the game for anything. But they're gonna have to figure out bounty hunting stuff. Well, I don't think rolling another character makes a difference because it's it's on the same account. You know, but they have to buy a, a different game, rep. They have, well, they have to buy a new game package. They no, might. but if but if but if you're griefing and you're just a jerk over and over, it doesn't matter if your character dies, you get a new character. You're still on, still on the same account. And they know to mark you and. And put you on your on the griefer server, for example. Then they won't That's play anymore. The way doing and then the new griefer will come up, or they'll. They well, because they go play WoW, well and nobody gives a shit. You, you, know, you, you say that, but well, everybody's going to grieve. Every, yeah. Everybody's going to be a griefer once. You know, you kind of well, yeah. have to. Ha you you kind of have to f have a forgiveness. It's, After a while, no, but it's yeah. being it's it's some people do it constantly, and that's yeah. what you got to curtail somehow. It really so depends it, on perception too, because people define griefing differently. And in my book, griefing is where you attack somebody constantly for your own entertainment, not for profit. You gain nothing from it at all. I mean, as a character, as a game mm -hmm. purpose, or anything like that. You're not you're not on contract. You're not doing anything for somebody else. It's just purely you get joy out of chasing this one individual down repeatedly and doing that. But from many perceptions, like in EVE, I was considered a griefer. Even though I was getting paid millions of this to come over and kill somebody, they were like, well, you're griefing me, bro. I'm like, no. From your perception, yeah. maybe. But from my perception, not. So it really depends. I think it's it's important to like be able to root out what's what. And at the same time, you want to kind of insulate people in their gameplay, you know? But you also want to allow this dynamic universe. Because in EVE, a lesson I, I learned the hard way was if you don't allow this open universe, it's not as interesting because you don't give people the choice to be assholes. They won't identify themselves as assholes till it really counts. For example, if I can't kill people in certain areas or make that dumbass choice to do it for no intended reason, I could end up in your org. I could end up stealing your wallet. I could end up doing this. So you open them up to the opportunity to get farther and farther in with somebody to do it. Usually an asshole will identify himself immediately and make a dumb choice and be like, oh, I just see a guy. I'll just blow up his shit. And then that kind of starts to let the assholes group up and you start to see that happen more and more. But if you have too many hands holding a situation, in my opinion, then you don't let those guys root themselves out because griefers, uh, they do. They'll root themselves yeah. out automatically. They'll be identified. The community will know who they are and they'll get that label. And yeah. there you go. Griefing is the, is the deliberate targeted harassment of somebody for the purpose of ruining their gameplay. It's not just... Yeah going in there and, and playing a role uh it, you know it's, it's abusing a game mechanic in a way that that you know it's not intended to be used it's repeatedly going after the yeah. same people You're, to watch their yeah. reactions and because you would take enjoyment in their distress uh, you know yeah. i encounter stout man once and attack him that's not griefing but if i follow stout man around and yeah. constantly attack him that's griefing and yeah. that's and they said they, they want to come up with ways to differentiate between that and ultimately those kind of people would be put in their own server their yeah. own instance now we don't know if that's changed with the whole new system they're looking at with having thousands of people per mm -hmm. per server I as opposed what to do hundreds. But. Is those people will get moved out to illegal space and they'll have a hot, real hard well, time coming into friendly space. They'll be out there in but, the void of space because since Chris Roberts is talking about reducing the amount of instances, I don't think there's going to be. But, like, but still, yeah, you know. the way instancing works in most games is there's a biasing system where it determines who you should be instanced with first and foremost. Like, you know, and you, generally speaking, it's your squad mates or your your org mates and friends, then the people that you've identified as your enemies or and the people the game identifies as the biggest threat to you. Like if it's a World War II style game, if you're a ground pounder, 
then you know the last thing you're going to be instanced with is a fighter plane because yeah. he's not the you know the biggest threat to use another ground pounder. And I think if they're going that 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 way, then similar things would happen. And that you know if you and I are in the same instance with hundreds of other players mm-hmm. in the same area with hundreds of other players, but you're a bad guy and I'm a good guy, it's much more likely you're going to be instanced with the other bad guys before your instance with me. That doesn't mean we won't interact with each other. It just yeah. means that you're far more likely to deal with those guys before you ever deal with me. Yeah, it so. just depends. I don't know. I think they're walking away from that whole aspect. I think they're just trying to make it single shard as they can. They can't do single shard, obviously, with the amount of fidelity they have in this, but they're, right. it's it's going to be harder and harder for them to do that. I would just like to see your choices you make in the game have severe penalties based on the severity of your choices. And the recovery from that process is supposed to take a lot of time. If you, if you can sense, if I come and kill Stoutman for no reason, no contract, no warrant, no whatever. And I'm thinking like Killjoys type thing here. Like you have to have, like I have to write a right to go and kill him, not to have repercussions all over me. It should take me literally weeks to recover from constantly griefing him to where I have to go out and grind rep to even travel in the system. Or if I come in the system, mm-hmm. he's operating, boom, UE spawns, kills me instantly. There's no, there, you know, it's just like jump ships. They're like, this guy's a fucker. We're just going to blow him up, <laughs> you know, and, and make that. And different a- aspects go. You continue to it, you lose insurance. Insurance companies won't insure it. I mean, make it harder and harder on a guy who's doing it without following the proper channels to make it happen to where it, it just makes him miserable. And it'll make an example of the rest of the community for those type of people. I like those mechanics with AI involved. I don't like removing people from the game because then it's like people make the same stupid decisions when they don't see what happens to somebody who does that. That's just my problem. You have to make an example out of a few. So, yep. so there's a deterrent for everybody else. Yep. Absolutely. There's no way around it. Absolutely. Many times I had yep. a friend in Jitta that came into Eve and just first time and they're like, I'm just going to kill us. I'm like, I wouldn't do that. Boop, they're dead. <laughs> It's like, oh, negative 10? Oh, well, we'll see you in a month, buddy. Go grind for a while. That was stupid. Honestly, I think the (laughs) idea of a reputation system, as well as a hard-hitting UEE Navy Mm -hmm. and uh, other navies, combined with the fact that there are going to be plenty of people, and and I seriously think this, your best players are going to be leaning more towards not necessarily the lawful side, but away from the unlawful side, your best fighters. And I think they want to be bounty hunters and stuff like that. And so... You know, and again, it goes back to that example. I need Mitachi's out there. I need co- clients that want to hire exactly. me to kill those fuckers. <laughs> Mitachi's out there, and he's a, he's got a mercenary slash bounty hunter org, and you know, Moonshiners is being a dick, and he's killing people. Uh, th- those people just hire Mitachi, and Mitachi sends his whole org after Moonshiners. You know, and then Moonshiners is the one running away, screaming, griefing because he's got a whole org <laughs> after him. And mm-hmm. but yeah. but that's that's the you know that combined with all the fun. other things they're putting in there. And that's drama, and, and that's what system. makes it interesting. That's really what makes yeah. games interesting is, like, you know, when it, when shit happens, like, dude, you wouldn't believe what happened. Moon, Moonshiners is there, and Stout and him got into it, so Moon just kept griefing them, and then all of a sudden Overwatch came in, Moonshiners <laughs> took two of them out, so then they brought in more people, and it was crazy, man. Now Moonshiners won't even come over the system because it's batshit nuts, and, you yeah. know. Those type of stories are the things people tell each other. They go, fuck, what game are you talking about, man? Yep. What, where's this happening at? I mean, how many people got suckered into Eve, like they hearing about these big wars, and they go, "What? I just click on a ship." I mean, yeah. And Eve is fun. I loved it for the people. But if you came in there with no friends, you're in a fucking ship by yourself, and you click on shit, and it's like, what? And that's why people never got it because they'd hear these epic yep. stories and stuff. That, that happened to me tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's a, there was a guy over at Grimhex griefing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I see a bunch of the test guys on the server. I'm like, yo, test guys, there's some guy, there's some public enemy over at Grim Hex. If you're here, do me a favor, go over to Grim Hex, clean it, get that guy out of here. Mm-hmm. Don't 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 let him do that. Yeah. Uh, I myself and a few other guys, we uh, emerging gameplay yeah. came from. I didn't have a criminal rating, so I start taking different comrades trying to get to uh, back to Grim Hex <laughs> as fast as I can. Uh-huh. Uh, I I, en- I ended up finding like th- the weirdest uh, piece of uh, ship debris that was just like I'd never seen it before. Yeah, it was a piece of ship debris in in, in yellow. I, I explored it. I got some cool shit, <laughs> but it, w- it was all just to make sure that the guy who was a public enemy over at over at Grim Hex, mm-hmm. who was just griefing, you know, blowing up ships and shooting people, and I was like, I'm call. I was I did I did a call to arms. I was like, guys. Uh, test Squadron, if you're out there, do, do go go to Grimhex right now. Go stop this guy griefing. I'll be out there like in a moment, 
and uh, it was emerging gameplay. And yeah, I do that all <laughs> the time in the Persistent Universe. Uh, I, I watch that's the what chat makes it and... fun to me because there's some guys. I mean, I'll run missions to grind a little bit and all that, but that's that emerging gameplay right there. It connects you with other people. You're interacting with people you normally may never of, and it, it's a story you can tell other people the next day, yep. and it, it makes the game more fucking interesting. Nobody cares. Yes. They like, hey Moon, you ran that mission over at ICC one two one. Oh yeah, I ran that mission over IC two one yeah. one. That's fucking after six months. That's what that we were doing. Boring, it was know? in the middle. It was the middle of ICC missions. Yeah, I know. And this so, guy's coming up. He's just grieving. It yeah. was like, hold arms. Yeah. And that's, Stop doing and, this. that's why it. people think I'm crazy. It's but spontaneous I, gameplay. That's what I, we're all I waiting want, for. I want yes. people to be able to track down people in missions if they work hard enough and probe and stuff to cause that drama because I want assholes to identify themselves. Then people ban up and then they come after them and then it's more yep. gameplay and it's just amazing. And then you don't need like thousands of missions. You can have 50 missions in a system and it's just all the interaction of people makes them all different and it's going to be really exciting. That's, mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons why I, I love playing in the, in the Persistent mm-hmm. Universe is yep. I do that. I go around, I leave the chat open, not necessarily interact with it but to watch. I watch for that yep. one guy who's like, he says, I can't, you know, really dude you blew up my ship at a Comoray and I wait to see if the response, if the yep. response is you know, sorry, or I just needed the criminal rating or something like that. If it's just a generic like, you know, sorry response, that's fine, okay I'll let it go. If the guy's response is, you know, ha, 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 get good, or what are you complaining about, yep. or fuck off, or something like that, I'm like, oh, I've got my target for tonight. Yeah, and then that's, you, that's, you know, find this guy and, that's and, fun. I and mean, make as him much regret as, being an asshole. As much yeah. as people say, oh, I hate this guy and all this stuff, Jack and Lines, I'm like, I'm having time of my life. I'm like, I'm going to go get this motherfucker. Yep. You know, I'm like, that's good, man. I like that stuff. It's fun, you know? So and I think it's good for us, especially as many people, you know, they're in the age group of, like, 20 to like 50 years old in this game it's good for his men just to get that shit out of our system girls can go over and shoot the other guys inside the game and nobody hurts each other at home it's great let's do it let's have more fun like that and blow people up in the universe and yeah it just makes me super excited i love it man yep. that's my shit I, right there I, I, Drama I love doing this stuff. feeds my wallet make it happen in the verse do it i also, I also love doing like I, I i had a real dick moment the other night i was laughing about it for a while because it was it was such a dick move but i couldn't help it there was a public enemy, and so I decided to go after him, and he was at Grim Hex. Mm-hmm. I arrived there, and he's clearly inside but approaching the airlock, you know, the little icon. So I maneuvered my uh, my Gladius until I had it right pointed in the airlock. Yeah. The door <laughs> opens, and I just laid into it with all my guns. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the icon... The icon immediately disappears, and yeah. I type in chat. I was like, "Public enemy contract completed," and this guy comes back. You ass, <laughs> yeah. <lol." laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's it's gonna be fun, guys, because there's so many elements. And this is, I mean, you think about all the immersion gameplay we have now, right? We have so limited missions available now. We still find fun things to do in the universe. They sprinkle a little more environment, a little more area, add planets, some these are vehicles, and then add trade and cargo. It's going to be endless for me. I mean, even after 3, 3.0, it'll be endless. My, minus the rest of the game next year and all the other stuff. It's going to be really impressive. So, uh, it's going to all change with 3.0, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it, it's going to dynamically change. I mean, it's going to be crazy. Mine day. Yep, exactly. Driz Durden says, Mitachi, instead of video games making people violent, video games give uh, the violent out, outlet a path, you know, so you can when, do uh, some stuff and, and kind of exert Enjoy. Yeah, well, that's true. I talk about this all the time because I, I, I don't like the fact that it's been this thing that people don't talk about for a long time. But I have a combat post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, early on, we figured out that uh, violent video games is a great way for me to deal with my when I get just like rage and anxiety mm-hmm. to the point like if I come home pissed off because of something that happened out in the with, a, with those idiot civilians out there, my wife's like, "Just go kill somebody on the internet for a while," <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's my that's my outlet. That's it's good. like, all right, fu- fuck it, I'm gonna go find Lucky KO on uh, on uh, you know Arena Commander and missile spam him for a half an hour. <laughs> you know, that, that's, yeah. and then uh, he comes into my chat. He's like, "What the hell is with the missile spamming?" Ah, I just needed to blow up some steam. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got about six minutes left in the raffle, and we got a few questions left, so we're gonna fire through these. Uh, let's see, Zim's final question in that set questions which he has more uh they he said they said on populated planets say earth that the only way you'd be able to land is through automation but do you think there will be some places on earth etc that you can still freely fly around and land say like antarctica well i think Um, in the open world you get to land just like how you manually but automated is it's in a business you can't have people smashing the buildings and stuff left yeah 
what they call the hero planets, which is planets like Earth, like Terra, stuff like that. Yeah. I think we're going to be restricted in what we can do yeah. for obvious reasons. I don't think it's fully automated either. I think you can choose automation, but I think to give you, from what they demonstrate, a tunnel, like an area well, where you can go down and fly manual. But if you go outside and deviate yeah. the path, they're going to automate you back on the flight path. So, yeah, yeah that way yeah, I guess it's kind Todd, of automated. Todd Pappy said they want to keep you from, from you know, like you said, slamming into buildings and stuff like yeah. that. So that's... And, you know, they, they spend a lot of time crafting these hero planets. They don't want them to turn into a free-for-all where people are just, yeah. you know, treating it like any other uh, procedural People just planet. be kamikaze all day long into Absolutely. a big city and and but, killing people just yep. playing the game. Even just on doing a partially nothing. Pl populated planet, I don't know if they could do that both ways. Like, have both types in the same planet. I'm sure they could. I just don't know how they'd implement that. Because it seems like yeah. on populated planets, they have the tunneling system. Maybe they'd put an invisible wall all the way around. If you come near it, it'd push you out. But that seems kind of lame. Well, I just, you just rather... have a zone. You just have a zone with with controlled airspace. Yeah. You know, if you're in this area, then you then you've got to do the remote control. Otherwise, you yeah. can just do what you want. There's nobody out there. Nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah, that, I could see that. I could see that. All right, so uh, CS Digital Design says, "Question: Would you want to start as an alien race yourself?" Which alien race uh, do you think Star Citizen will eventually add the ability to do this? And you guys would want to be alien if you could, in other words. No, nah, yes, not really. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Stoutman would. What what race? We're gonna, and, uh, we're, I don't care what race. We're going to get it eventually. You yeah, know, we're going to have races will. to play. It's just not going to be at launch. It'll be a year or two later. Okay. You know, it's not a priority, but it's on the table. They, they've said that as much, and I'm cool with that. And when, when it comes, then I'll... I'll have a alien character probably, which why not? There you go. Playable vandals in uh, behind enemy lines, perhaps. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Take that idea. Take that idea. I would like to be a vandal. Just I wouldn't probably want to play it long term, but just to see inside the king ships, maybe mm -hmm. how that's not, see the inside, you know, view of all that. So that would be kind of neat. That would be so, cool. Yeah. yeah l l lucky Ko just changed my mind. I do want to have at least one of my characters be a. Blue alien tentacle headed opera singer who just sings <laughs> on 890 jumps. It sings like techno opera and it's badass. Yep, yep. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it yeah, rocks in your stomach. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Zim asked if he could have his bro bucks now and can he get back paid for his questions. The quality of questions <laughs> leaves uh, much to be desired, and the fact that you're late supersides <laughs> all that. Zim, sort we're, of stuff we're still waiting. Do. We're still waiting a thousand credits for every question you ask. You yeah. so. You know, get yeah. that paid up first. Exactly. Uh, Carbon Coda says, question, with the new group mechanic, would it make sense to have notice sent to the person you you friend to make it easier for them to add you if desired? Or, yeah, I, yes, yes, yeah. I think. That, I believe that's coming. I think that's going to be in the next Moby Glass integration. You'll have, like, or, your contacts down here, and it'll blink, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, he's my buddy. Blink. Yeah, I, I think all that's kind of what... You know, Lando, sometimes when he talks about it, he starts to get excited, and then you can tell he's not allowed to tell us anymore about it, and it's frustrating him. But whatever what, what, whatever they're calling Org 2.0 now, because they're not calling it Org 2.0, but this whole new integrated Website communication system. The whole deal, yeah. Lando's really excited about all the possibilities that comes along with it, and yeah. I think that's the kind of things that are coming along with it. But it sounds like this system is going to allow, at least for the very least, text chat both within game and outside the game at the same time. So like yep. Matachi's in game, I could be on the RSI website if I wasn't banned from the RSI website and send <laughs> him a message and he would get it in game uh, and things like that. So I'm sure there's going to be uh, watch, all sorts of integrations like watch that. Watch them hook yeah. that up and then it bans Eric from the game because it's all integrated. It's like, <laughs> I, I, oh no, I, I, the forums it carried over. When he started talking about that, that, that was a legitimate thought I, I, oh my gosh. I had about that. Is That's the people because those of us that are banned, we're only banned from from not using the forums or the chat. We can use everything else. Mm -hmm. It's just to keep us from causing problems in the forums. Or so, the chat. But if, if the forums and the chat are now tied into in-game chat, is that going to automatically Ooh. ban us from in-game chat too? Like, are we going to be the, the proxy, silent you can't hunters? even spawn in Star Citizen at all. <laughs> well, we still have. I mean, we'd still be able to but, uh, spawn in because they've they've said over and over again that. What goes on with the forum bands has nothing to do with the games, you know. It's uh, in fact a lot of the people, a, a lot of us that are banned <laughs> from the forums, they want us playing the game in Testament. One of the, that's one of the reasons we tend to be banned is we're quite passionate and argumentative. So, yeah. absolutely. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna end the questions right there. Um, Eric can tell his 
story about why I got banned if he wants, because uh, Inner Hype wants to know. I'm going to take a quick bio. <laughs> Inner Hype already Fif- 57 there. seconds to type explanation mark. Bros in chat, guys. Let's push this thing up over 100 entries. Come on, we got 217. Explanation mark, bro. $10 star system gift card on the line. Open everybody. Nobody has advantage in here. You have to follow every streamer in here. Make sure that you have all the follows in all the channels, because we are going to check. Um, and we'll, we will draw a winner here when I get right back. So see you in a second. But yeah, for Let's those of you that are wondering, the long and short of it is uh, uh, I got banned from the forums because I'm argumentative and uh, uh, I don't uh, play nice. If, if you act like an idiot, I tell you you're an idiot and they don't like that kind of stuff on the forums. That's, that's the long and short of it. Uh, the, the reality of it is, is they were never certain if I was being serious or trolling. And so they just automatically assumed that I was trolling whenever people got angry at me and they kept warning me to stop trolling. I'm like, seriously, I'm not trolling anymore, guys. I'm just arguing with people. And finally, they were just like, you're banned. Uh, I've, I've had conversations with Lando about it since then. And uh, basically, I've been told that if I, if I want to come back, they'd be more than willing to, uh, to review the case and probably let me back in. Uh, but we also determined that because of my nature as loving to argue and stuff like that, that I'd end up pissing off their mods again at some point. And so Lando and I both came to the mutual agreement that, that RSI is probably better off without having me post in the forums, and I'm better off not posting in the forums, and we'll just you know leave it that way. Yeah. But, uh, I'm more of a, a you know I'm a redditor style a Reddit style arguer, and that just doesn't work on the Star Citizen forums. You know? <laughs> yeah, Reddit's a little uh, it's a little harsh, but yeah. uh, I mean you can see them wanting to control their their side of the conversation it is- on there. It is hard yeah. to adjust, though. If you're somebody like me who spent a long time on, on the internet and on forums and bulletin boards and stuff like that, the restrictions on RSI are unprecedented compared to most of what, I, what other places I've dealt with. Like, it is amazing uh, how much you sometimes have to tiptoe. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the Renegade Squad guys, they, they can tell you about it. the Renegade Squad, there's this running joke that every week, like, one of them gets banned. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> just because, you know, the, just their, their talking style. They're, they're upfront and confrontational. And you get too confrontational. You don't even have to be insulting, but you get too confrontational. And then the moderators start warning you to back off. And it's like, oh, we're having a conversation here. So, yeah. But He's no, back. Like, uh, I've said this before, uh, and uh, I will say this again. There is no ill will between me, the moderators, and the community team at all. So don't take it that there is. We're we're all happy with what with, with the situation right now. Don't let them lie to you. They mail me all the time saying what a jerk Eric is. <laughs> <laughs> it's face. All right, they guys. Pay, they pay him every month, so he's not talks nice about. They, 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 they pay, yeah. Absolutely. They pay me by not melting all my ships and permanently banning my, my account. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. We have 224 viewers right now. 97 Woo. entries. <clears throat> it's like 235. So. That's more than their room illegally holds. Some people are going to have to leave, I think. It's not safe. <laughs> Fire hazard. All right, guys. One last chance. Make sure if you've entered this raffle that you have followed all of us. matter of fact, you should follow all of us anyways. Just, yes. You know. Common courtesy, taking up our time and all. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so we're going to draw this thing, and uh, we want to wish everybody a good luck. Please make sure that uh, you all drive home safely and all that jazz. And immediately after the stream, we're going to be doing another stream with me because, you know, I got to just, you know, kill myself and see how long I can go today. For I've done nine and a half hours. Why not just keep it going? And then what do we do here? Another just burn two, yourself two up. It's okay. Yeah, why not? We're just, you know. Wear myself Hold down. The candle. Oh, it's good, dead, man. Dead by Citizen Con 2016. New goal. Have a t-shirt. Um, yeah. So we're going to be doing that afterwards. And we were, last I checked, and we'll check after the stream, we were only two subs away from giving away the Saber. Uh, and then we were only uh, an additional seven subs away from giving away the Harbinger, Vanguard Harbinger. So there's lots of hype, lots of cool stuff to give away still. But, guys, we're going to draw this thing right now. Good luck, everybody. Here we go in three, two, one. The amazing Schneiderman. The amazing I know Schneiderman. the amazing yep. Schneiderman. He has two minutes I think he's to been following there. me. Yeah, he, make sure. Yeah, he's been following me for a while. Stuff. So make sure the amazing Schneiderman. Yep, but make sure he's there, and then he's also has to reply in chat within the next one minute and forty seconds, or there will be a there. He said yes. Do we have we have? He's won some stuff on my channel. Stout is he in your grouping? The amazing Schneiderman. 
Uh, is he in my what? In your? Is he um, following you? Is he following you? Mm, I don't know. Followers. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh oh. I'm I'm looking at looking at how I to look it up. Yep. He's got he's got Stoutman. He's got myself. Okay. Does he have Eric? Yep. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. He follow, he's been following me for a couple months. He's got all of us. There we go. All okay. right. The yes, amazing uh, start him in. There we go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sir. Yeah, absolutely, man. Make sure that you send uh, me a message on Twitch with your RSI handle and email associated, and we will get you that ten dollars gift card uh, right away. So cool, guys. So uh, do we need to go around the room real quick and? talk about what you guys got coming up and seeing so pimp your wares and what you're planning on playing over the next days the weekend maybe even labor day stoutman what do you sure. got going on this weekend anything anything special you're just gonna be streaming hammering it out like you always do uh yeah i'll be streaming some more i don't think i'm streaming tonight but i'll stream some tomorrow i'm sure probably more probably subnautica or star citizen or both okay so i've been i've been streaming a lot i hit 2,000 followers last night so oh, congrats, I'm, having, I'm having a good week Nice. Uh, oh. What times? You just got a kind of window of what times they could look for you? Uh, well, my normal stream time is Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. through 11 California time. I usually go longer. Um, and then Fridays and Saturdays, it's like if and when I feel like it. Today I did four and a half hours Subnautica, and then I'm two hours tonight, and I'm pretty much done tonight. But I'll be back tomorrow. I'm in the awesome. mood to stream something tomorrow. Sweet. I don't know when. I'll, okay. I'll tweet it out. What? Follow him on Twitter, guys. Make sure you follow his channel. Uh, don't always trust Twitch, though. It doesn't always notify everybody, so it's good to be on the social media and make sure when these guys are popping yep. on. Uh, Moonshiners, what you got going on, buddy? Uh, I'll be streaming tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we got uh, episode three coming up, not Woo! next Monday, but the Monday after. Uh, yeah, man, that's been going good. Good. I, I, I kind of, I think I want to do it weekly. But we're, we're, we're going to continue doing the bi-weekly thing for a while, but mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying it. I like doing the podcast. That's cool. Yeah. You've, you, you've, like, you've encouraged me, Matachi. I, I was like, I've enjoyed, I like this. I, I, I like this, but yeah, it's I easy just to talk about good. a game instead of Isn't just playing it? it. Because you're just sitting here bullshitting with the bros and stuff, and you're just like, mm -hmm. hey, what's up? You know, all this stuff. And people love it, and they get that extra interaction. I think it ties into streaming beautifully and just gives you another format where you can express some other views. And it's, it's really good. Yep. 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 And, and don't forget to ago, follow me on Twitter too, guys. The yep. Moonshiner Five. Yep. Moonshiners didn't even want to be in a, never in a, in a chat in the chat uh, program a couple months ago. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't want to talk with us on Discord. Thanks yeah. for Stoutman <laughs> to leading him over to us, and then you know, and then yeah, some extra it's encouragement. All my fault. Now he's on fire. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. There we yeah. go. All right, Eric, what you got going on, buddy? Oh, well, like, like we said earlier, today I was at PAX, uh, mm -hmm. PAX West. I'm going to go back tomorrow for a specific event, and that is the uh, Test Gaming or Test Squadron slash Bad News uh, Gaming Meetup. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. I'm going to paste a link to the information of that in chat there. Uh, let me make sure I got the right link. This isn't to one of my uh, porn sites. Um, just, <laughs> just double check yeah, here. You don't want to see what's on the redacted dot porn site. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. The, that, that's, don't we we don't talk about that over here. <laughs> you think the Japanese watch some weird <laughs> shit? You don't yeah. want to see what I'm watching. <laughs> the black bars don't cover enough. That's all I can say about ours over here. But yeah, the, and uh, that's tomorrow at uh, five Pacific time at a burger and beer joint in Seattle. It's being organized by. Uh, let's see if I can get him on screen. One of these, this gentleman right behind me, not not WTF. Captain Flint right behind Sweet. me. Uh, and uh, I, Captain Flint's going to be there. Tokyo's going to be there. I'm going to be there. I think Richard, uh, WTF, um, probably. I don't know if Baron's going to be there or not. Very, It's very likely Baron's going to be there. But, mm -hmm. yeah, and so that's that's at 5 p.m. tomorrow. And if you are in the Seattle area, come on down and, and meet up with us. We don't bite. We're regular people. I, I had somebody tell me today. They sent me a message on Twitter after I left PAX saying, I saw you. But I was uh, a little scared to come up and say hi. I'm like, I'm just another gamer. You know, I, we are no different than you guys out there, guys. Uh, you know, we're we're just we 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 play these games. Don't please don't treat us any different because we it feels weird when when people do. Uh, so please come out and meet us, hang out. We're talking Star Citizen and all that stuff. And then on uh, Monday, hopefully, depends on what's going on with. Uh, with packs and all that, but hopefully on Monday I'll be doing my subscriber appreciation stream, which will hey. be giveaways. Nice. And uh, I don't do the give I don't do the subscriber things where only the subscribers can win, but they have a 
much better chance of winning. That's how I do that. So, but we'll be doing giveaways and stuff. And my stream time starts at midnight, so it'll be midnight Monday, and then I do another stream at eleven a.m. And I'll be doing the giveaways on both day on both those time frames. Yeah. So. I I have a confession to make. I actually fall asleep listening to streams. And since Eric does some of these late night ones, my wife literally woke up the other day and she's like, what the fuck are you listening to? And it was me listening to the audio of Eric McKenna streaming. It's like, I don't remember what hour it was in the morning, but it's like, it's like, it's like no, no, no. And they're like, what are you listening to? I'm like, this is, he's, and my wife said, this is the shittiest talk show I've ever heard. I'm like, he's streaming games. He's streaming games. I was like, it's like, it's just some guy Randall was on. She thought it was the radio. I was like, no, it's a stream. Oh, well, that would make sense then because when you can't see it, it's just it's just weird. I'm like, it's just some guy like, talking every once in a while. Yeah. yeah. yeah just like, oh, yeah, here it comes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, no, I, 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 a lot of people do that. They fall asleep uh, watching I, me. That's like the end of their, their evening. And, know. uh, it's always funny when I host somebody who's like loud and raucous afterwards because I'll get messages on my oh, on my Twitch yeah. the next day. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was sleeping, and then you hosted Twerk, and Twerk oh. started out all crazy. And yeah, <laughs> no, I remember I did that. I left it on, and my wife was taking a nap in the afternoon. And WTF sometimes in the afternoon has been uh, hosting Ezekiel, and Ezekiel yeah. has this whole thing when he gets raided. He puts on his war helmet and his hammer, and he goes, "Oh, this is a metal." My wife like wakes up like, "What the fuck is going on?" I'm like. Like, it's just streaming, babe. It's okay. Just calm down. It'll be all right. It's like, the guy has, like, a voice modulator. He sounds like Satan. He's swinging a war hammer on my screen. <laughs> it's, like, it's great, yeah, man. It's great. great. It's like, the hype is real. Um, no, Moon, if you want to, some of the guys are asking about your show. I don't know if you push it to YouTube or anything. If you want to throw some links in I, there, buddy. You uh, could, uh, yeah, I, I did start up a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I'll pop a link to it. Yeah, yeah do that, and I'll, I'll tell him my deal. But yeah, guys, definitely check out his new podcast. We're going to be starting another one soon. Um, I'm not in a super rush because I'm really worried about trying to just keep the, keep the flow going with the stream, try to push for that partnership hopefully through the last year. I've been working really hard and trying to get all the, all the stream time I possibly can to kind of entertain you guys and hopefully provide some uh, good times. Um, we are streaming. My usual schedule is always down below. You can see that we stream almost every day of the week. Currently, uh, Sundays we do impromptu Saturdays. We do impromptu. I will be streaming tomorrow during a good <laughs> portion of the day. Uh, we also obviously do this show 10 30 PM CST every Friday. Um, we push it out to YouTube usually over the weekend as well. So if you or a friend missed it, you could always check it out there. Um, what else we got going on? We got, uh, I don't know, we might be giving away a freaking Saber after this with LTI, so that should be pretty pumped up. We'll be checking that out. We're also going to be doing the Harb, and we're going to have lots of other good giveaways all through the thing because we take all the money from the subs and everything and put it back out to you guys, 100% going back out to the show. We've already given away, damn near after these prizes, we'll be well over $1,200 probably within the week and a half we've given out in prizes here. So we're, we're just doing it. You guys wow. are making it happen, man. It's not me. It's you guys, your generosity, all the all the guys out there is just kind of pumping it back, and we just want to keep it up. Uh, mm, I am going to be talking. It. I'm going to talk to some of these guys and some of the other guys, and I do want to organize something for Citizen Con. I'm thinking about doing maybe a 24 hour hype stream all the way up before it because I'm not going. So since I'm not right. going, I want to call some of these guys pre-show on Skype and just see what the deal's about, and then I also want to call them at the after party when they're a little shitty to find out all the stuff that's happened there that they're not supposed to tell me on Skype live. And you'll be able to watch it right here with me and it'll be yep. maze balls. So be ready. I'm going to be guy. doing some periscoping from citizen con. So you can do some of yes. broadcast, some of that for me. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. I, I, I will be doing that too. I will be uh, yeah, definitely broadcasting yep. uh, periscopes and, and, and whatnot and, and we'll, stealing we'll link all the them viewers all for that... you guys. So you can, well, we'll link it because we like to, we appreciate view vampiring. We, we try to do yep. it ourselves as much as we can. So we'll mm -hmm. be linking their Periscope so you can watch them live. We'll take five minutes out of their time there, not during show, but before or after, and they can call in and kind of give us a little one-on-one, -on -one, like, hey, how's it going? What's it up? You know, and all that stuff, and just remote in the stream, and we'll have it all hyped and all that stuff right here. So There's going to be so that. many people are going to want a Periscope from oh, yeah. that it's, whole weekend. So it, it'll be a if you're not there, fest. you're going to have... You're going to have all the opportunity to broadcast stuff and have chat about it. It'll, it's going to be great. It'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. Uh, your your uh, viewers are demanding a link to the Satan uh, uh, Warhammer dude. Oh, they, they the want to follow this. Yeah, <laughs> follow they want to follow him. <laughs> follow raid remote Ezekiel. I'll find it here. We'll find it, or we'll find it between the show and then the next one. <clears throat> we'll find it. We'll get it out to you guys because you guys are going to hang out for hopefully a saber, right? I mean, I would. 
Just I'm going to bed. I am so freaking tired. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Like I said brother, before, so day. 24 hours with Supreme Tokyo is a lot of. It, it's it's draining. <laughs> it's very draining. Yeah, drink some protein <laughs> shakes. Go to sleep. But yeah. guys, again, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you again follow these guys if you haven't already. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, probably with a similar outcropping to cast members if they're available. Uh, maybe a, one or two other additions. We're going to try to rotate in some of the new guys, but as we're leading up to CitizenCon, for some of the familiar faces you're going to see out there, give you some of their information, what's going to be going on over the next couple weeks. And, yeah, that's that's all I got for right now. Stay tuned for the regular broadcast of my show after this show because we're just going to show you a good time because that's what we do here. That's what we do. All right, guys, so Moon... Stout, Eric, thank you so much for being here, guys. Love you. Oh, and we just got a subscriber from over there. I think right there. Nadeus Max just subscribed to us. So we'll give him some hype here in a little bit because uh, I do have the alerts off, but not the uh, the uh, deep bot alerts apparently because I heard that one. But uh, we'll get into that right away, guys. Give me about five, ten minutes, and we'll see you here in a little bit. So have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good one. You know, we've been saying that every week, and it keeps showing up. <laughs> we did get him to shut up for a while tonight.